she tell me, she told me, she say, if you want to get acquainted with me and my son, you'll have to take us to Disneyland. Ain't that a bitch. I went to pick up the next day, he she got four more kids. I says, uh, who kids are them? She said, those are baby kids. She said, where the fuck is baby? Baby went downtown. So why did she take her kids with her? Oh, don't worry about it. Baby left $10 to help get him in Disneyland. Ain't that a bitch. Man, it was $200 trying to get them fuckers in Disneyland. And you know how kids act when they never been nowhere. You know how they act. Coach. We go into small, small world. They jump out the boat. I can hold dick to my small world. Shit. Small world. We baby kids. We don't die. We multiply. Yeah. 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 Shit. I said, damn, no wonder baby went downtown. I was scared too, because I'm on parole. I ain't supposed to be around nobody bad. I go to jail, fuck around with baby and kid. They going around, slapping white folks upside the head. Baby, it's my wife! It's my wife! And the baddest one was three years old. Talk and shit in his pampers at the same time. Come on. We, baby and kid. We don't die, we multiply. Yeah. And some guy out there, some white guy out there thought they were my, my kid. That's what made me mad. Bro, brother, uh, bro him? <laughs> uh, tell me, are those your kids? I said, no, no way, none of my kids. Them baby kids. He said, gee, where in the fuck is baby? I said, motherfucker, I don't need no baby. Ask me where the fuck baby is. I, t- I, told, I told Jamaica, I said, Jamaica, they do one more thing, I'm going to have to leave. It's all to it. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to leave. So now, I saw this, I ran to my car fast as I could. I tried to leave them kids, y'all. I got to my car, here they is, waiting on me. Had an arm full of Mickey Mouse watches. Come on. Talking about, it ain't, it ain't time to go. And little bitty was talking about, he, he trying, to, trying to leave us. You don't know who you fucking with. We baby kids. We don't die, we multiply. And I saw, I saw the police. Man, I was happy. Oh, I was happy. <laughs> I rolled out the window and said, help, 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 help. <laughs> Police even pulled over and said, she. <laughs> Man, the baby ain't kid. Thank you. I'm the jaw breaker, the candy taker. And never skip school, I'm the food faker. Original man in a strange land. You never saw my butt on American bandstand. The MC's name is Khalil. And if you can't spell it, you never will. A lot of provider for the flavor you're lacking. But if you stop my flow, start straight jack. I'm a shine, no not Latifah, the men no mic, just like Aretha, cute little girl, but I fight like a man, I even met Iron Mike Tyson, say yeah, Sean, Khalil, and Pee Wee Wong, R-E-S, a T-C-P, never slipping, a sliding, no magic, a slacking, baby's kids, straight jacket. We've got an assault on characters in section five. Order received. Shorty, the OG with all the clout. Lip snagging for us under the blouse. Three years old and still drinking Similac. He smacked me and I smack your back, punk. So now it's time for me to straight jack y'all. And get busy like a senior hall. Taking a dump can be so relaxing. Mm, straight jack it. Oh, oh. So, man. I'm Tommy Cole. So it's time for us to talk about today? black animation. So it's amazing that we have not talked about at all. A person that a lot of people don't even mention. They don't mention this name a lot. His name is Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith was the art director for in Disney and a lot of major 
um, animation for Disney, and he made Proud Family. He um, I feel you're underselling. He, he made the Proud Family. He uh, helped with CJ, C Bear and uh, C, C Bear and Jamal. Yeah, I couldn't get that out. Um, he also, of course, Princess and the Frog. Come on, you see how that looked? That didn't look like nothing reminiscent what you used to see back in the day he on is Disney, a Disney Channel. He's a Disney product guy. He's he's their guy. I won't say token hire, but maybe token hire. He probably was a token hire back in the eighties. <laughs> he probably was, but. He's a hell of a token hire because he also he was an art director for the Lion King. He he has his fin- he has his finger on animation, pretty much. You know he he has a presence. People just don't talk about him a lot. And it happens. A lot of anime direct- animation directors don't get a lot of praise that you think they should and shit. So you know it happens. Yeah. But we need to recognize him. I hope people know him by name. It's an easy name if you. Hey guys, if you if you know football back in the nineties, think of the badass nigga Bruce Smith. Can you remember that name? Yeah, you can remember this dude's name. It's very easy. Think of Batman and think of uh, staying off of American Dad Smith. Well, look, the point is this: <laughs> the point is you have to uh, you have to recognize this man's first big outing, which was Baby Kids. Um, Hand, uh, handpicked that, by Reggie Hudlin, by the way hand-picked by Reggie Hudlin, meaning that he was the only nigga that actually had an animation. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll say this much. You know what I think it was? Reggie had this movie and was like, Look, if I get this guy from Disney, this is a big get, and I'll have something. I think that's what the mentality was. Actually, my no, whole co- no, my I question... I think this my, than that. I my think question for this... this... Actually, my question for the whole thing is really... This idea of making an animated making an animated feature film based out of stand-up comedian uh, Robin Harris, this was one of his routines. He took one of his routines and turned it into a full like a full-length movie. Now what I'm wondering is, did he ever you know like whoever came up with the idea, did they ever approach Robin and say, "Hey, look, we want to make this movie based off of your routines?" I think I think they had I think they had to I think it was a premise that hey well we made a whole movie about Bebe's kids and you know a subplot about um, never mind never mind, this right well, I mean can I be real though did, did, did y'all guys ever you... it's it, no hold on hold on right. hold on I'm sorry it's more it's more of it was just an opportunity I think back then in the day we were trying. It, it, we still are. We're, they were just trying to do something new. And, you know, you Reggie Hutman had enough pull where he could actually make an animated movie, and he did. And he based it off of Robin Harris's stand-up, like you said, and what? <laughs> it happened. I think this is what those things. It, hey, you have an idea? You have an idea? Go with it. Hey, it worked. I mean, did y'all ever, like, you know what's funny? Robin Harris, I know he was, you know, we all, all three of us watched Def Jam on HBO back in the day. Um, It was funny, I put Robin Harris in that category, like with Red Fox and Ronaldo Ray, where I never saw their full-blown stand-up on VHS. My uncles had their stand-up on VHS, but I never, like, watched a full hour-long set of their comedy stuff. You know who another person you can add for that? I, I'm with those people except Red Fox. I seen George Red Fox. Wallace. That's another yeah, one. Yeah, I'm gonna say you can do yeah, Thank you, George Wallace. You can also throw um, J. Anthony Brown on there. Um, love him to death, but you can put John Witherspoon. I still never seen John Witherspoon's full. Never seen a full stand up routine. You know? I never did. Yeah. I now I actually saw a routine of his. Um, God, like for John Witherspoon, it wasn't like the whole one hour. Uh, segment or anything like that he was actually on Sinbad's tour when he did that special in Aruba get out of here uh, really yeah he was part of the tour well, I shouldn't be surprised I mean Sin- Sinbad was so, like Sinbad did have like a lot of old school comedians on his on his thing so that makes sense I mean this was like super early 90s Chris like really early 90s like brain damage Sinbad Special early nineties? <laughs> no, more like he didn't get his T V show yet early. Oh shit. The one on Fox. That was nice. Yeah, that yeah, was so that nice was yeah, so that was brain damage because brain damage is when he had them coveralls and shit and he was just coming off a different world. You know what? You're right. 
Man, I think um, <clears throat> I think another one that um, uh, basically all those uh, L.A. comedians were in this movie. There was a, <laughs> is that little weird circle, you know, those comedians that, you know, they they all they all eventually go to town join the show. <laughs> those, Look, they, they've they've all done it and stuff. I mean, Myra J. That's another one who. Oh. So, yeah. If if you live in around the DC metropolitan area and listen to Time Joe on the Morning Show, she was a staple on that little crew she, and stuff. She still is. She oh, she still, still is. is. She still is. I think. Don't 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 get me on that. I yeah. think she still is. But, I, I'm, I'm not mistaken. I know Jay is not on the show no more. Yeah. But I know she is. But look, Myra, she does. Last thing I remember, what Myra did. She did write. She wrote for actually a couple of your episodes for House of Pain. So. Hopefully they're the good episodes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, look, look Ty, Ty, Tyler Perry will definitely get somebody in in there on part of this whole thing. So you know, there there is that. Um, the funny thing is, you look at the cast and stuff. You got a young Marcus Houston, you know, immature, was still in his yeah. inf- infancy around this time. Okay. No pun intended. Okay. Can I be? Can I? Can I? Can I do a bad joke? Can I do a bad taste joke? Go go for it. Is this before Chris Stokes? And I'm done. All right. <laughs> I think this was this was Chris this Stokes. Was Chris super, Stokes. Chris Stokes. Was, <laughs> Go ahead. First of all, like first of all, D, this was super before Chris Stokes. Yeah. yeah. I first mean, come on. Uh, I mean, come I'm, on. This was this was way before. You know, this was way before two light-skinned twins told him to go home on every episode of their show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a young Chris Stokes. <laughs> bonus po- I was going to say bonus points to anyone who gets that reference. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm, I'm thinking of picturing Chris Stokes like the Spice Adam meme where he's poking his head around the tree and shit. And that's Chris Stokes looking at Marcus Houston right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible because Marcus Houston was like 11 with this movie. Don't say that. That's terrible. <laughs> now, uh, 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 hold on. But here's the funny thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, I think back to about a month or so ago, when, actually a month ago when we did uh, Bushwhack. And I think back when we was talking about John, we mentioned John Hughes. And um, <laughs> we said the Chicago verse. So can we, I can't say this is a part of the Compton-verse, but is this a part of the Compton-verse? Yes. Because, I mean, you can say that, right? This yes. is connected. Despite it being animated, it's still a part of that universe. I would say more so the Proud Family universe, if you want to be real, if they could. Yeah, the but universe, that, hold on, the universe that started, the universe that started the Proud Family. So, all right, well, actually, to be more, you know, be more uh, uh, specific. Um, it's actually part of the Hudlin verse. Yeah, because this is more connected to House Party. Um, I was just gonna, I even, was just going to say that D, that this mm-hmm. was that this has more of a connection to House Party than anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's a really part of that. It's part of that circle more than anything else. Yeah. But and you you can you can tell down for the actors and all the rest of that. But anyway, who else is in this movie? Um, got Phase on Love playing Robin Harris and Phase on Love. Look, whether I love Phase on Love or not, he has his moments where he can be funny. So I, I will I will. Phase on Love, yes, he does. Me and me and me and Eris, we did um um three strikes and we really talked about how Phase on really didn't try that movie, but yet he was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, I like this little bit role in Money Talks where he's taking his shirt off. And he's like, oh, for real? They put their hands on you? <laughs> See, that right there, that right there, that was that was Smokey and Big Worm after Friday. <laughs> that was, that was, uh, what was the other movie he did? What was that movie that Couples Retreat? You know, yeah, you know what Couples made, Retreat. Hey, D, hold up. You want to know what made that so, you know what makes that scene so great now when you think about it? This was... <laughs> This is Big Worm in jail, not realizing that Smokey snitched on him. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Big Worm just goes straight up jailhouse gay off the break. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, we got... Wow, we got... Look, uh, right, oh. Oh, 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 one more thing. Mm-hmm. One more thing to mention about... Uh, we said Big Worm... We, uh, like, everything would phase out well now. I just got a question real quick. We don't have to go into it, and I don't want to go into it, Chris, but... Is it because he won't shut the fuck up? Yeah, it is. It's like most comedians in his position where it's like, look, I'm not going to sit there and say you're washed because clearly you're still funny when you want to be. But 
clearly shutting the fuck up will help you out greatly because clearly if you shut up, your money flow will still be coming in. Otherwise, you won't be on the chitlin circuit doing shit. Is are you are you are, are you two referring to that time he came out of pocket for what he said about Dave Chappelle? Not even Dave no, Chappelle. He'd be saying some wild ass shit like that's like yo dog. I hope you don't believe the bullshit that's coming out your mouth right now, right? It's funny. Here's a funny thing. Here's a funny thing. I there are only a few things, not too many things, but there's a few things I do disagree with Aries Spears. But here's the thing with Aries Spears: Aries backs up his shit. It's not like he's saying this from an ignorant place. It's just his viewpoint, and, and when he articulates it, he articulates it, and he will use a cuss word on you. <laughs> also, <laughs> you uh, also, he's more funnier than Donald Faze. Faze on love. That's just me, so, you know. Yes, he is. So, there is that. Um, I mean, and, and also, and also... It's, it's not even it's not even that like you there's other comedians that that will speak their mind and, and say what they want to say and but like I said they have they can articulate why they feel that way. Faison will say I don't like Obama why? Cause he cause he likes scared. <laughs> like uh, that's not a good reason, dog. What are we doing here? Man, he a hater, man. He a hater. Y'all know he a hater. Or he'll hater. do or, or he'll do this <laughs> or he'll do this shit where it's like. Clearly, Bill Cosby did rape women, and he'll sit there and pull the bullshit. Instead of like, well, you know, yeah, Bill Cosby, a rapist, he'll sit there and be like, well, I don't think he raped all 60 of the women. I'm like, hey, hey, dude, like, he had to rape at least one of them, so that does make him a rapist. So. <laughs> I bet, I bet and then he'll, fl- no, hold on, then he'll flip it, like, then he'll flip the script and be like, but he made the Cosby show. He put black people on television so in a positive matter, light. He's still a rapist. <laughs> There's, I mean, and again, I'm not discounting the amount here. But I'm just saying, if out of 60, he he raped at least one of them, that still makes him a rapist if we're going to really go nah, on this level here. It's, it's like what Dave Chappelle said, man. 40 women came out. I'm like, oh, shit. Man, 16 of them bitches is lying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so okay, so moving on though, we got Faze on love. So you got Vanessa Bill Calloway, who you know what's weird about her? Her career is odd. It's it? odd in the sense of like she's not huge, but she's like middle classing it up in movies. Like she just does her job and keeps it moving. You're not lying, man. It's, see, see, it's 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 weird that she has been in I, I had an iconic role in. New Jack City, and she's she did so. No, was she in New Jack? No, 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 no. That wasn't her. That's Vanessa Williams, the other dark. Yeah, that's one. When, yeah, that's the other Vanessa. All right, so Williams. Vanessa Bell Calloway. Now, she's the now. Hold on, now help Not me. Not get her confused okay. with Michelle Michael. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. said, no, because you said because you said New Jack City. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, who did she play? Was uh, she? In, what was she in Soul Food? No, you know what movie she was in that oh, we... Now I gotta look up. No, 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 D. I will... I'll, out no, no, D. Here's the thing, D. I will remind you of the movie that we all know and we talk about a lot. Uh, one, she was in Biker Boys as Homeboy's mother. That still don't help oh, me. Oh, no, no, no. I got oh, the... No, I got no. the perfect one, D. I got the perfect one for you. And she was the one from know. Coming to America. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. The first wife that Eddie was gonna marry in Coming to America. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something i seen her in one of the most awkward sex scenes of all time which is um she was in shameless and, oh um, shit yes she was you right yeah he plays um v's mom mm-hmm. and long story short v's white boy husband <laughs> oh i was that kevin mm-hmm. is it kevin i think it's that yeah that so yeah he is a sleeping with her mom because he's trying to get his wife pregnant or something. I, 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 God, it's, look, look, it's hilarious. That's all you need to know. Actually, I got one. <laughs> so I, know no, I, somebody, got... I know somebody that's seen this is going to be like freaking out right now. now so. I got one. Even, I got a better one for you, D. How about the fact that she was in the often forgotten uh, Sylvester Stallone movie Daylight? Mm-hmm. Wow. She played a. Uh, she played one of the uh, emergency tele telecommunicator people. Yep. Basically. Hey. Okay. 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 You want to know something, guys? That movie has also been 
coming to our door saying, hey, let me in, nigga. <laughs> this is like coming to the door. Now, now, this thing, now. Hold up. Hey, 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 Chris. Hey, Chris. It keep, no, it keeps coming to the door, and we keep kicking it to the side. Like, oh, no, we, like, really, go, we really do, man. Like, go away. We don't want to talk to you right now. No. <laughs> Y'all come out and play. <laughs> oh no, man! It's raining, man. But it's sunshine. I know, right? That's oh, wild. Oh man, Coast we had some, like, oh man, we had some problems. See, <laughs> now, now here's the thing. Um, I, 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 hold on, one more joke, one more part. The errors did this, <laughs> and did this happen? All of a sudden, he's right. He's like, like daylight still sitting there looking at sad. While bushwhack knock on the door. Hey, 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 man, come on in, nigga. Bushwhack, you that bush? <laughs> look, like, look, close the door. You letting the air out? <laughs> dude, guess who walked? Look, they been walking out with a uh, walking out with the aluminum foil over the plate. Is um, <laughs> is um, God, the Don the Dragon Wilson movie we did it all. Um, oh, <laughs> Cyber Trackers. Yeah, Cyber Trackers and um, and uh, Glory and Honor. They both walk out like, oh, hey, what's up, daylight? Who the fuck is y'all niggas? Oh, oh, we, we see movies. We see movies. They let y'all in? Yeah, yeah. How's the food in there? Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, hey, D's wife can cook like a motherfucker, nigga. <laughs> oh, hold on, D. And that, the, probably the the biggest insult to injury. Falcon Rising, they ain't even talk about you. What are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my hey, God, hey, man! Like, hey, like, hey, man! I only came here for the marshmallows and ginger ale. Hey, Eris, I'm sorry. Did you mention the <laughs> Did you mention the other movie that has kept calling us? Like, hey, yo, what's up? It's Falcon Rising. Um, this is the 14th message I left you, Dwayne. So when you want to get back, you know, wrong man. Michael John White, call me. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Carl Ramrod. Yay. Go watch this too. Hey, yo, D, I know you a bitch, man. You ain't no Chris about me, have you? Because you know Chris is going to say yes to that, ain't you? That's the reason why you ain't saying shit, is it? How come you don't want me? How come you don't want, how come you don't want me no more? <laughs> that is terrible. For your consideration. For real, Falcon Rising has actually just been dodging. It's, we just been, we haven't been so much dodging it as in other shit came up. So whatever. Yeah, anyway, I, I, here's the thing. Um, lastly, and I told, I, I told, I told Sue this, and I have to tell you this, man. Buckle, buckle, buckle up your seatbelts here because this is this is this is the big whopper of a caster right here. So, sure. playing Lashawn, Janelle Green. Now you might be asking yourself, Janelle Green. That sounds familiar. Oh, well, that is porn star Ariana Star. I knew it. Wait, I knew it. <laughs> I, I freaking knew it. I looked at the name and I saw and they sh- and I was like, okay, I seen her in a different world. I remember that character. She was one of the characters that Dwayne Wayne was trying to help. I think during the later seasons and stuff, you know, on mm-hmm. the Kyle campus. So I was like, all right. All of a sudden, you go to Google Images, and it's like, wait, 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 wait a minute, what's going on here? No, no, they can't be the same person. They can't be the like, same person. No, no. <laughs> oh shit! What? It is her. <laughs> it's exactly how my mindset went immediately. <laughs> I'm like how Chris freaked out. <laughs> no, no. Because I, like, no, I thought it was, I thought it was one of those situations where it was just a case of mistaken identity, and she wasn't the porn star. You know, that's what I thought it was. Right, so it was just like when it happened, I was like, "Huh, that's a that's that's a hell of a uh, career option," and that worked out for her. So there you go. Yeah, but then see, here's how. This is how you know that you knew that you knew it was her when you see her face. Oh yeah, the face is <laughs> obvious as hell to fucking catch. I mean, come on. No, no, no. Hold on. Let me finish. I'm kind of going into bam territory. All right, all right. When you see her face. And you think back to what you were doing when you saw her face the first time. <laughs> you know what? You ain't lying because that was like the first thought that popped in my head immediately. I was like, ooh. Yeah. You're like, oh, God. Okay, yes, I do remember. 
All right. Ugh. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. I have to get my, my that image of her out my head when I'm watching this movie because I hear the voice and I'm automatically just go to that and I'm like, oh, shit. Like, damn. I wish I didn't know this little tidbit of information now. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. It's like now, now you, I'm, now I'm you feel extra. Now you feel extra horrible. Yeah, you really do. I yeah. don't. I don't. I don't feel horrible at all. I don't feel horrible at all. Because, look at one of these pictures. Why your titties look so sad? <laughs> but, 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 gentlemen, she can suck a mean dick. There you go. <laughs> and this is why, this is why CJ has a, hold on, AD. This is the reason why CJ has a recurring role as appearing as a guest on BAM. <sighs> Gems like this. Saying, hey, we we me look look. People don't know that at one point at, 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 at a at 2016 San Diego Comic Con, we're standing outside for the Hall H tickets, and me and Sue had a about 30 minute discussion about porn stars for for mm-hmm. uh, just to pass the time. Th- these are conversations that happen. All right. Hey, 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 Chris. I, I'm glad you cherish that. Hey, Eris. Yeah. Rookie. Rookie. Or so, what? or so D thinks it's, I'm, that's a rookie thing. <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 actually I did it wrong. So wait a minute, wait a minute, how many, how many minutes you say it was? How many minutes you say it was? How many minutes? Was? 30, 30, 30 minutes. There's 30, 30 minutes? No, 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 those are rookie numbers. Me and Eris will sit and talk about one specific scene for about two hours, friend. You got to do more than that, baby. You got to pop, pop those numbers up. up. You got to pop those numbers up. You got to pop those numbers up, bro. What are you Ares, doing? Look, look, Ares, look, look, if I let Ares look, the next movie, the ne- oh my God, we have to do an Anna Nicole Smith movie because I would have Ares, if I would let him, <laughs> <laughs> just, just in so many words, let it rip. <laughs> not, and not in the Beyblade way either, folks. Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> No, so, but but nah, so so out so you got that cast and um Tone Loke who I gotta be real man, I still love Tone Loke. Um I, I still am trying to go to that 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 you know thing with all the old school artists and stuff because Tone Loke to me, I think we didn't really go deep into it in Surf Ninjas. I still like him. He was an alright rapper. You know, all, look, look, first of all I'm gonna say no, I'm gonna say it because I stand by it. Tone Loke is harmless. Yeah, he really is. I, I mean, I'm not going to put him at, like, top 50 greatest rapper of all fucking times. It's just like, and, hey. I'm not, and I don't mean harmless as in, like, you know, like, like please, he, you know, like, he's a punk. He ain't gonna, no, no, no. I mean, like, he's harmless as in, you put him in a movie, he can't do no wrong. He's enjoying himself. Because, I mean, really look can. at C-Bear and Jamal. I really felt that he enjoyed himself recording that show. I didn't know really what it is. Until Logue found out that his voice was unique. That he can sell his voice. He wasn't a bad looking brother. You know what I mean? So I think he lucked up for this time. I think it's kind of funny though. I think you think he'd be in more stuff. It's like the dude that voices you know, uh, Ebon and fucking Static Shock and stuff. He has the same type of deep voice as damn Tone Folk. You, you would think you you would think he would have been more stuff, but hey, hey, he disappeared, man. Yeah, he just stayed I mean, out of the limelight. I was gonna say, I mean, I can't really say he disappeared, so to speak. I mean, he's just been, honestly, chilling. he's just been chilling. Yeah, I know. I think you know, and I think he just enjoys it. Tone you know Loke Tone, Tone saved his money. I have to imagine he did save his money. He's like, you know what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hope nothing, Billy. I hope him disappearing from the, um, from you know, television and all the rest of that was like, you know, a personal decision, like straight up, like I'm just not doing it. And I hope it wasn't in, like, you know, like. A, divorce and shit like that you know what i mean yeah you know death in the family or something i hope it was i hope it was was one of those you know what i'm good it's 2002 i don't think nobody's really looking for me so actually yeah, so. <laughs> actually hold on actually uh tell you the truth tone loke has had some stuff that's happened i think to he him had a since, heart attack uh, or something on stage or something like he's that. he's had health the man's had health issues and legal issues pretty much since the the 90s and the in the early 2010s so that's uh, that's probably, that's why I said I was hoping it was a, a, a personal decision and not him. Just, just like you said, that right there. Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me either, man. But rounding it out, um, we already talked about Myra J. Uh, we got Nell Carter voicing Vivian, who is the other friend to Dorothea. Which is amazing. 
Uh, it's, it's, it's funny with Nell Carter. It's like, you're doing that? That's what you're doing in this movie? And then, by the end of the movie, after you see everything she does, you're like this. Nell Carter was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, yep. we, all, we all love Nell Carter in the illustrious Give Me a Break, which is probably the only thing I remember her from anyway. Is that? Nell Carter, I remember her being in this bit parts as me growing up. You know, I know who Nell Carter is when I see her, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that, that kind of rounds out the whole cast and stuff for the most part. But uh, I guess we can get into the film proper, actually. Yeah. Yeah, the movie starts out with, you know, cuts <clears throat> of uh, Robert Harris on stage talking about Baby's kids. Baby's kids, everybody knows a baby. Everybody knows a baby. Everybody knows multiple babies. Some of you are related to a baby. Some of you are a baby. What is that's a baby? Also, what is a, what is a baby? I, hold on, before we get to that, I did want to point out before you went into a D that this movie was released two years after Robin Harris passed away. Yeah, yeah so it's kind of weird. I think you know, was there any? You know, you know what? That's it's kind of weird. I have we haven't heard any really backstory about the movie outside of just you know just the surface stuff that everybody knows. I would love to know. What took what happened with between those two years? Was it just respect to Robin and y'all pause the process? Well, wasn't like or, House Party or, Two coming out around this time too as well? Exactly. No, no, because like, no, because if I ain't mistaken, what House Party One came out in what eighty nine, if I ain't mm-hmm. mistaken, mm-hmm. and House Party Two came out like that following year. I thought it came out in ninety one actually. Either way, it came out like if Robin Harris died in nineteen ninety, and the movie came out. After he, well, the movie was released after he died. The sequel yeah. that is was released after he died. So, oh, you know, that is kind of weird. It was kind of weird, you know. Hmm. I mean, and I think they did kind of pause. I think you know, see, you know, here's the fun act. When you really look at it, how Robert Harris was in the first house party, he was really a big part of why that movie works so well. Um. You got you got to imagine the impression it left on Hudler. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Gotcha. For him to not only you know he had to, he was a he was he it's like Robert Harris was not a big comic at the time. He was uh, he was like he was known everybody knew who the, like you know blah blah people knew who Robert Harris was. He was hilarious. You know what I mean? He talked like somebody you knew. Yeah. <laughs> he was one of those you know, one of those uh, comedians and. You know, yeah, it left a left a hole, and I'm pretty sure they left a big, um, a big, uh, you know, just a big hole. You know, like a, nah, I hate to repeat that, but you know what I mean. No, you, you know? and you know what, you were right. House Party Two was '91. Yeah, ah, good guess, yeah, good guess. So you had two productions, pretty much, and it had to be one of hundred. Like, yo, I was looking at Robin's old shit, and he was talking about Baby's kids. Oh yeah, I remember that little segment. And you need to talk about that shit. You know what I mean? And, you know, yeah, that had to be the way the movie came up. He <laughs> came up with the movie. But, yeah. But, yeah. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, know him, him, him doing, the, doing the stand-up. And the <clears> one <throat> thing that stood out to me when he said that was like, oh, it's Bebe's kids sitting up there drink, st- and up and like, drink coffee and no-dos. <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite line. <laughs> so, you know, like, like, fade out. Can't hang, huh? <laughs> 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 and, and you knew it was a routine because when he said we babies kids we don't die you hear the audience like carry on that that message when we multiply but like the whole the whole beginning of this movie is showing the introduction to all these kids and stuff like that <clears throat> and you got you basically showing all the kids like for instance you got um fucking uh khalil you know showing how much of a badass he is and shit some big kid takes his hat he ends up kicking him in the nuts and getting his hat back and stuff because that's what you do you know um d uh, uh, while we mentioning that part d will let everybody know right now there are times in this movie where the animation is huh pretty decent and then <clears> there's <throat> times where bruce who punched you in the hand? Like Bruce, uh, I can see, you know, and I totally get what you mean, because there was one time, this is like, what time would you watch it? And I'm like, oh, man, Bruce, that was some, um, 
that was some choice animation right there. Then the next minute, I'm like, yo, did Jack Nicholson jump into his character from The Departed and took off a boot and just went ham on your on your uh, good No, no, sir. Hand? See, see, sir, that's just light work. We're talking Robert De Niro from Casino. Hey, which hand are you drawing, left or right? Oh, we, er, look, Eris, we, look, hey, Chris, you don't know. Me and er, Eris, when we talk about anime, we call that the Toriyama. Toriyama did that to multiple people at Bird Studios. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to... He just covered in with a cigarette. I was wondering, which hand do you draw with? My left hand? Your left hand. Yeah. Have you ever tried <laughs> doing it? No, have you ever tried doing it with your left hand? I, I don't know. So you're righty. Yeah. Could you do it with your left hand? I, I, I've never tried. <laughs> Interesting. Then you just you just give the give the dude the nod and he just goes ham with that hammer. Now you gotta yeah. learn how to do it. Now you gotta learn how to do it with your left hand. <laughs> Do it like this. He was like, "Screw you! I'm gonna go to a different animation house." Yeah, I, I bet you do. I bet you do. Go to IG. Go to IG. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> a character I was jacking up kids. Anyway, but like, but, yo, so, so AD. the animation was wild. A- AD. Movie, AD. Then his partner comes in. Hope, uh, his partner opens up the door, and sees what happened to him. Look what he did to my hand, man. <laughs> <laughs> the animation in this. The, um. Mm. The animation in the movie, like I said, it goes everywhere. And it's kind of funny. Bruce, this actually, this type of thing kind of follow Bruce Smith. The only time you don't see it is actually in Princess and the Frog. And even then, there are some parts where... Disney, that's that's because that Disney, Disney had them had a gun to their fucking head and said, you fucked this up for us? <laughs> <laughs> we don't they make really any goddamn can. money. We'll fucking they really kill your did. damn family. <laughs> they really did, because they had that look. They really had that look like... It, like Actually, no. To tell you the truth, CJ, no, they didn't. They didn't have a gun to his head. You want to know why? Because they looked at it like this. Hey, this is a liability for us. If this thing flops, we can officially shut down Walt Disney Animation and stick to Pixar. <laughs> and then it made... It it made Modern, and it made a decent amount of money. So they no, and here's the thing, and I kind of agree with D. It did the thing where, oh, it actually made money. So we're gonna do what we do with most black folks. We're gonna extend that goalpost out and be like, you didn't make a billion. We're yeah. done with traditional animation now. <laughs> yep. Like, like extend that goalpost, renege, and be like, you know what? It really you didn't do, do enough. It oh. made it- like the only hand drawn animation you're going to get is come from Studio Ghibli. Isn't that right, Studio Ghibli? And they just said, no, they're shrugging their shoulders. Yeah? <laughs> we don't work for y'all, really. Y'all just distribute our shit. No, no, you can work for us. <laughs> Disney. Look, Disney. For the family. <laughs> family. Yo, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so you see Khalil. Uh, wait a minute, what was LaShawn? What, what did she do? What was her LaShawn little intro? LaShawn had a doll that, no, 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 that was, that was when she met Robin. Um, I forgot all her intro, but anyway. Yeah, but you know, you see her, you see um, Pee Wee, he, he all pedals into the liquor store and gets bottles like on the bottom <laughs> shelf. No, he scoots past the beer. Goes past all the beer and goes immediately for freshly chilled bottles of milk. Because that's what they sell in the corner stores in the hood, you see. Yeah. I mean, yo, that's all throughout Compton. You know, this is all throughout Southeast, man. That's the only way to get to them. But you know what? I think that was kind of, you know what was funny? I think that was kind of like him picking up what he did on Who Framed Roger Rabbit with Homeboy voicing the little baby and shit. So maybe that, that was, it felt like that was his way of like, all right, I'm going to do the same thing. You're, except you're I'm really going to use took, Tone Loke. You really think he took his cues from, uh, from baby Herman? That makes sense. Really? I think really? he did. In this no, I can see that. I can see that. I think also, I think also it does go into the, not even that stereotype. It's just a little thing that a lot of black people do where it's like, you know, yeah, every man, they, these little kids, they crazy, man. Even the baby crazy. Baby like, what up, nigga? Yeah, that's <laughs> so basically what it was. Thing. So you want to do the same thing. And this time you got to tell look, so it was like, what up, dog? What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a 45-year-old man. <laughs> that clearly been which smoking that, too much goddamn which cigarettes. Makes, which is what makes that scene, which is what makes him voicing that character so funny. Especially every time he shits. We all die. We <laughs> What you don't know is that Tone Logue actually did shit his pants when he made this. <laughs> it's like, Tone, uh, it smells mighty funny in here. Yeah, I shit myself. Um, 
I mean, that's, uh, I, I, get, I, give, I give you uh, <laughs> plus 50 points for the method acting, but uh, we didn't really need that. <laughs> we really didn't need that. Shit everywhere. <laughs> Golly. Faison loves coming here. Who? He <laughs> 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 said who? <laughs> Hey, it's the truth. You know who the fuck that nigga was. Nobody knew. It's 92. Nobody knew who Faison was. This is true. This is true. But I, I like, said who? But I like how the movie goes um, Tarantino on us um, where it starts at the end and then we get him retelling the story back at the beginning. But I also like the fact that he's talking to the bartender who is the blind guy and he's pouring the drink and it's just... The one thing I would give the movie is this. It's the little small things like they're in a bar and there's roaches just crawling. Like, yeah. it's, like it's nothing. It's like, it's, like, what the, it's like basically your, um, where all the comedy comes from is like what's going on in the background. The dialogue itself is not funny. It's what the action of the characters is. The fact that he's over there trying to give advice and he's pouring the alcohol right by, like not even touching the glass. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's supposed to be it's supposed to do... You know, it's just little shit like that. It's the sight gags that make it all funny. Um, it's, it's scattered all throughout the movie too. So he tells everybody about how he goes to his best to his friend's funeral, and it's a good old hood funeral where the casket is inside the house. And also, we as black people ain't shit because we will talk shit about the person that fucking died because we oh, ain't shit. It, no, it's not just that. It's the fact that he's he said he said it. And I quote. Everybody was there, and everybody was glad that he was dead. Exactly, because again, yeah. we ain't shit. <laughs> see, but then, no, okay, you know I, mean? I get it. I, 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 no, but I get it. Like I that. get that though, CJ. I really do. I really get that. But my, what I want to know is, what well, what did he do that was so bad that made everybody happy that he was gone? Yeah, notice he owed everybody money. That's what happens. It's like this motherfucker owed me damn twenty bucks, and this motherfucker died. How, how dare he yeah, die? Fifteen dollars back in nineteen seventy four. And I don't, and I don't <laughs> know. And I don't know if that if one of the uh, one of the dudes that was playing, um, that was playing dominoes in the back was uh, was Ricky Harris or not. But I mean, he he reminded me of, of him for some reason because I remember he said, "He's look, I'm gonna tell you something about that man Walter. That man Walter's so cheap he couldn't afford a good evening." <laughs> No, no, that was George Wallace. That was George Wallace. Yeah, that was George Wallace. That was George Wallace. Wallace. Yeah, that, was George okay. Wallace that was George Wallace. You heard John Witherspoon, and um, um, I knew I, I forgot his name. Fats was in it because you heard it like I ain't fat. I'm busy. Yeah, like I'm busy. Like well, now I don't do that. Look, you sit down here and stop trying to look at everybody. Ham. <laughs> so, like, shut up, old fat fool. Look at you. You know you're so fat. I can't tell if you're walking or rolling. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it, I, I just got to be real. Ah, uh, older baby boomers. <laughs> hey, look, man, we all got cookouts. Were, you know, you know, all those baby boomers that were born in the forties. So by the time we were, by the time we were like ten, these niggas was already hitting fifty, and they were like running the world. And our parents were all the young motherfuckers. <laughs> I mean, look, they remind me of our fan reunions where we get the old heads. They sit up there talking cash shit and stuff in the background the whole goddamn man, it's time. It's like, man, man. Look, look, look. I, I look, look, real talk. Y'all talk. Look, we all been to an asshole's funeral. And it's sad in the space. I'm like, you know what, man? I love that nigga. And then at the same time, woo, I'm glad that nigga is Go! Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm glad he's gone. Oh, it's like it's a shoot. It's like everybody, it's like everybody, glad he's gone. The only reason why his wife is in there crying is because he couldn't afford the life insurance. <laughs> That's, that ain't shit. That's, That's just terrible. Black folk. Now look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. That's never going to change for black people. We just <laughs> we, we we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep going in on your ass regardless of whether oh, yeah. you you know regardless of what it is. That's just how it is. Hey, yo. You know, you, you know, you get this, Shirley, Shirley, I am so, I am so glad that you stuck with that nigga all, all that time. Mm-hmm. You know, he cheated on you. Yeah, he did. I'm, I'm sorry, baby. It, it don't matter now. He gone. <laughs> no, but which, like- which, by the way, which, by the way, the joke of all this, even though this whole thing is like one big long joke, it kind of reminds me of David Allen Greer's character from, uh, from In Living Color. The one where, you know, that, uh, that character he plays when he, he goes to spe- he goes to events. 
usually events that don't really require someone of his character, but he will make up he'll make up lyrics as he's singing songs, and and it will be <laughs> terrible. And I remember that one time he had to sing a song at a funeral, and he was singing about the person that died, and he was talking about. He was talking about the dude that died, and he was. And all of his lyrics were so terrible that everybody was looking at him like, "Yo, this is messed up." Like, seriously, this happened. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Side note, I like I know, he said, I it, I mean, "No, see, see, D, because you know, hold on, I remember one of the lyrics. He was like, he he called the dude fat back, right? So he was like, he said, "Fat back ain't never had no life insurance. You're about to lose the house and car." Ah. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. I used to love it because he always be the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd like to hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, woman looks so ugly. Gotta put a four top around her neck just so a dog can play with her. Uh-huh. You. <laughs> you know what was funny too? Homeboy at the funeral. I like how the picture, he looked like fucking fat Al, Al Sharpton. <laughs> yes, he did, didn't he? Yo, yo, why did that, okay, why, when I first saw that image, I was like, yo, why was this, okay, somebody help me out here. Was this the image that they were originally going to go with when they were designing Rollo Goodlove, but, but knew that they were going to get I sued? because it's like, look, folks, folks that don't know this and stuff, for some of the new people that listen to this, you might look at Al Sharpton, skinny Al Sharpton. At one time, Al Sharpton was fat. Like, he, you know, he out here protesting and helping out black folks and chewing on a KFC chicken wing at the same time. These are things that happen, all right? Maybe I have to make him, too. <laughs> Oh, man. He did. Matter of fact, he did that same the, joke on the Living Color. Yep, he was in the like he was in the Reebok jumpsuit <laughs> with the little uh, white towel around his neck. Man, Al Sharpton, fat Al Sharpton, kept that and that he got the James Brown with the Reebok going. with the Reebok jumpsuits on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. but uh, so yeah, <laughs> whatever, man. But of course, um. Uh, his secretary walks in, and here comes what D likes to say. <sighs> the only thing in this movie that is actually animated well and stays animated well throughout the entire movie. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, you know, we've all been around old, older black dudes and stuff. They go straight <laughs> pervy. It's a funeral, and they're all like, man, I fucking blah, 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 blah. And I'm like fucking laughing. Hey, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry. So how's that different from us? Uh, subtlety. <laughs> no one ain't. No one ain't. I ain't gonna do that shit no at a funeral. I mean, Chris, 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 Chris. I know you're trying to paint yourself as good, and you can do that. But me and Eris had a funeral. There she is, right there. Yeah, who was that? That's the secretary. God damn, nigga, what? What? I will put my toe in in, in her, her booty hole. I'm not right. Why? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. Look, like, hey, hey, Miss Lady. Hey, Miss Lady. She a bitch, man. Yeah, she ain't trying to... <laughs> you know it's bad enough that you've seen it in this cartoon, and then who would have thought, who would have thought, years and years later, I would see this same joke in Killer Season? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like they, it's like the writer's daughter. Hey, let's do the same exact thing. <laughs> My man said, my like man, my, Cameron, <laughs> sitting down smoking weed. I do that thing off of baby's kids. My man was, my man was in there looking at that chick talking about so, 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 so I can't get your bleeper or something. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, y- you know, this is a funeral, right? I'm just saying, you want to get something to eat after this is over? There's a blimpy around the corner. There's a blimpy around the corner. Yo, man, why the fuck? So, so, so Robin goes over there and say, I'm going to shoot my shot. And he actually shoots the shot and makes it. I mean, <laughs> well, in a way he did, in a way he pulled it off. Now, hold on. I did like how at one point he did almost blow it because, yeah. because they said, huh, this is so, <clears throat> like, so you was here for, is it, you know, you really here to show your respects or something, right? <laughs> and she's like, I don't care about no Walter. I could have came to Walter's funeral in my drawers. I'm like, subtlety, Robin. Very, subtlety. very subtle. Very subtle. <laughs> subtle. But, 
<laughs> and then hold on, how you like the way he flipped that? How how you like uh, how you like how he flipped the script on her when he said, you know, it's a little a uh, little late for a lady to be catching the bus all by herself. Do you need a ride? Don't thank you. I got my own car. Well, you mind giving me one? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking that Honda Tercel and shit. <laughs> all right, real talk, real talk, real talk. So, Robin, Robin, I'm not going to hit on you at all, but you look like a nigga that smells like high karate all <laughs> the damn time. No, 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 no. He smelled like high karate the moment he went to go pick her up. <laughs> the moment he picked her up. No, the whole movie, that was his scent. <laughs> that and real talk, black man sweat. I'm going to be real with you. Black people don't stink like white people unless we're sweating and it's mixed with cologne. And also it's don't put on deodorant. He stinks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Chris, Chris, Chris. This is 1990, this is 1991, so first off, the deodorant only did so much back then. And number two, True. and number three, that nigga clearly used big ba- ba- Baby powder. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, you got to when you're wearing them tight ass fucking damn golf jeans, golf pants, and I shit. Know, that looks like a nigga that use golf. That looks like a nigga that use baby powder. <laughs> oh man! Speaking of which, <clears throat> speaking of which, first of all, how do you like uh, how do you like the the car that he robbed from Scott, uh, from Tony Montana? <laughs> I actually actually back up for a second here. He uh, is actually getting a ride from her, and she has to go pick up her son, Leon. Yeah, he was a clean-cut kid in the 90s, and real talk, I looked exactly like him. <laughs> yeah, D, oh, we, D, D, we all did. We all had that high-top fade. No, 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 no. I was a nerd. I was a nerd uh, kid. I had ghetto kids. I had, I had ghetto cousins, and I was the one that talked white because I said that way instead of that way. <laughs> I mean, but Leon was one of those, like, clearly... Uh, <laughs> Leon, as a character, though, it feels as though he's a mama's boy. Clearly. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, because... Oh, no bullshit. Janika looks like a girl that says, That's right, you my king. She looks like she says that to him <laughs> all the time. Also, real talk, ladies, I don't know you, but if you say that to your son and you have no man in your life, Stop it! Those are the type of chicks that dress their kids yeah. up like the like the like the guy that they want to date, basically. So, I yeah yeah. I mean, yeah, my man. First of all, my man yeah. Leon. First of all, my man Leon, running out there in them pajamas, looking like something Franklin from Charlie Brown would wear. Uh, first off, I, well, first off, I had pajamas up until like middle school, and then it just went from t-shirts and shorts. <laughs> so yeah. I can't knock them for that, honestly. I'm sorry, you said t-shirts and shorts, nigga. <laughs> Full on draws, brace, nigga. <laughs> like, no. Well, it, alter- like, it alternated. Let me phrase it. It alternated, all right. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 yeah, this is what it is, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, wait a minute, about Thursday and Friday, yeah, yeah, about that, look, nigga, I'm single, so leave me alone, <laughs> so, <clears throat> like, so, yo, apparently, hold on now, apparently this must have been a long drive home, because that kid fell asleep, that kid was knocked out oh, in the yeah, backseat, yeah, time to, to brawl with the kid, uh, and uh, fucking fall asleep with the kid, yep, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, how that... far? Did... Now, okay, now, I know that I know that BS line of everywhere in LA takes 20 minutes, bro. That looked like 20 highways hours. Are clear. Highways are clear, dog. What the fuck are you talking about? Highways are clear. It doesn't take that long to get from one side of Compton to Watts back to Compton. It don't take that damn long. <laughs> it really doesn't. I mean, so <clears throat> so he decides to move. He decides to go ahead and truly shoot his shot by. Asking her out to a different event. He's like, yo, I want to take you someplace. And she said, look, if you really want to get to (laughs) and notice how she says it too, head rolling and everything. If you really want to get to uh, get to know me and my son, you got to take us somewhere like somewhere better. Like, uh, oh, fun world. Okay. All right. D. Shaw, three black geeks. Guys, if the girl that you're trying to bang does that to you and you have barely talked to her and she suggests this same type of plan run 
<laughs> do not pass go. Do not put that two hundred dollars. Right. Believe, <laughs> believe me. Believe me. The box isn't it's worth not it. Worth it. <laughs> I don't care how thick her ass is. I don't care. And I don't care weird. if she got a good job. <laughs> it ain't. I never understood worth. that logic of like. Okay, and, I'm getting to know you. This is. And believe me, this is nineteen. Hold on, this is nineteen ninety two animated, animated, uh, like animated light skin. Uh, sorry, this is nineteen ninety two light skin anime girl thick. I hate you for that, Eris. I hate you for that. <laughs> and she's clearly thicker than all the anime girls at this time. <laughs> I know. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, it's one of those situations where you're sitting back and you're watching it. And it's like taking the fun world, and it's like I don't I, I never understood this idea of like hey you got to do something for me and the kid instead of hey how about I focus on you instead of just the kid because I'm just trying to know you and then hey if it does get serious sure hey I have to bond with the kid right. Well duh well duh Chris I mean I know it's just the, the logic thing, of that like we got no but the only difference is the only difference is this she feels as though that you're only here for the box. So Which is true. in order to get <laughs> said box, you're gonna to have to also treat my son and me because that comes in the full see here's the thing. Here's the thing. There is an actual deep discussion that can be set out of this and no I'm not having it. But there is this <laughs> there is a deep conversation you can have out of this movie which is a talking about black fathers or at least father figures in the home. You see, you see the lacking on on both sides from both kids. With Leon, it's just him and his mom. A male influence could be a big help in that situation. Yeah. And and on the other side, you got baby's kids. Ain't a nigga there that want to be around them because let's just be real. Baby got some <laughs> got some good pussy, and, and she's giving it away, y'all. Come on, y'all. It's, it's Jossie up here. She ain't going. She ain't going to ask some child support, nigga. Come on, let's go. Giving it up, let's go she break. giving her. Like she giving it away like it's a side dish at a fish fry. Now, 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 you're probably saying yourself, that's sad. Here's the thing. It happens every fucking day in the hood. <clears throat> and there's no male influence. There's nobody that gives a shit. So, yeah, there's a deeper conversation. And guess what? I'm done. Okay, we're done. Anyway. <laughs> no, the, the thing, but the, it's, it's, like I said, it's cool because it's like all of a sudden, hey, if you want to get to know me, uh, we can go to King's Dominion. <laughs> you got King's Dominion money? <laughs> uh, like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, so we going to Six Flags, right? Okay, look, check it out, check. We can go to, like, the park or something. You can't take me to Sky Zone? See, the park is free, though. <laughs> Like, bro, I thought you hold on, but I t- like, but I want to go to Sea World. This is when you pull the dashy. You take like you get in the car. You be like, all right, get real quick. Stand in front of it, and you look up and say, look up at the side. Look, like, look up at the sky. Sea World. I mean, you ain't lying on that. <laughs> meaning, meaning you see the world. <laughs> I knew this one. I, I hate it, dashy. I hate it, dashy. I hate that. She's so much for that skin. <laughs> Yo, take me and my son. Oh, look, can you, you? So you don't want to take me and my son out to? Um, you don't want to take us out to Chuck? I'm mean, not even Chuck. See, Chuck E. Cheese is inexpensive, but <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> I take, I take y'all to Dave and Buster's. How about that? All right, cool. Bet. Got gotcha. you. It's the same headache. It's the same first, fucking headache. Like first, uh, no. You know what? No, that didn't exist yet. Cause I, I'd have been like, look, look, t- like, look, real talk. I'm gonna take you to Planet Hollywood and I'm gonna call it a day. Yo, no, we're still doing it too. You're doing it too tough, guys. I will take y'all to the park. We can have a big ass picnic. We ain't finna go to no Fun World, which is this universe's equivalent to Disney World. We ain't about to do that shit. So, but Rob is a good nigga. Real talk. Yeah. Well, I'm a good nigga. He got he making decent money. He can flex. So he does that. So he come on he like so he showed the next day, looking fly, hair is combed, brushed his teeth, got a big ass boogie in his nose, it's all right. <laughs> Which he, he picked his out. nose and I laughed my ass off because we've all done that before. So yeah. look, look, he picks it look, he picks it out. He pull ups to the scene, gets out the car, and there's three more kids. 
Wait, I'm before, hold on, hold on. The running gag. He gets to the seat, gets out the car. The hubcap falls off, and he flies <laughs> off. Flies off. It I'm flies so off, and he puts it back on. Because of course it does. Why would? Then ro- look, and then Robert walks up to walks walks up to the house, and there are three more kids. I ain't gonna lie. I want to be honest with you. That right there, ladies, that's a terrorist threat. Tell me, so I go to pick. Tell me, so I go to pick her up, right? <clears throat> she got three more kids with her. I like the, um, I like the uh, interaction, though. <laughs> now hold on. I, now what I liked was how he did. He, I mean, he pulled the line straight from his stand up, where he's pointing them, going, "Um, what's this? What's this? <laughs> what's all this?" I'm sorry. I imagine Robin Harris doing it. <laughs> what is Tell this? Me, so what's this? And she said, "Oh, these are children." No, no, no. See, last night you had a kid. A kid. A, a kid. She said, "Oh, Who are these, these are t- baby's kids." Who the hell is baby? <laughs> and then, then I love how she introduces each of them one after another. She's like, "This is Lashawn." Like, oh, criminal number one gets popped upside, the, like gets popped upside the eye with that cone. <laughs> Dude, Khalil giving him the fucking black man handshake and his fingers get all fucked up. It's hilarious. What's up, my brother? What's up, my brother? Hey, what, what, what do you say? Louis Ferris, Shaka Khan? Yeah, yeah Louis. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man, look at that, man. Oh, man, you pitiful. <laughs> fucked up his hands and here come Pee Wee. Small one. <laughs> no, he pulled back his hand, right? That Joe was looking, oh, like, my, done. He was F-O-O-T. like, <laughs> He was like, man, look at this. Look like a booming hell spring. <laughs> Put my F O O T up your B U T T. Oh my goodness, those are not double knit bands. Right? <laughs> I'm trying to bring it back, right? <laughs> <laughs> I look back at. I swear, I look. I swear, I look back at this movie, and I'm like, you know what? This movie still holds up. It's still funny. <laughs> oh yo. yo. This is the sad, the sad reality of in Baby's kids is that it didn't make its money. It barely made its money on DVD, but everybody loves this movie. Yeah, almost every black kid I have talked to loves Baby's kids, man. And watching it as an adult takes on a whole other, other level for it for me. By the way, my kids have watched this movie; they love it. You know, you, know, you, know, you know what was funny too is like he picks him up and they're driving and he's trying to flirt with homegirl and Pee Wee <laughs> drools on his fingers and he just wipes his hand on the kid and I'm like I'm pretty sure that, and I'm looking at you D has that ever crossed your mind? <laughs> I'm sorry the kid drools on me and I throw their drool back on their face you fucking right I do <laughs> especially when the kid ain't there <laughs> Oh, oh man! If I, I wish I did to a kid that ain't mine. That would be even better. When you do like a little thing, like if, like I pluck kids. I don't hit kids. I pluck them right in the middle of their brain. It shows them who's boss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but, I mean, um, look, hey, look, folks, on, folks might be looking on, at D right now, on. like judging. I'm like, he just plucks the kid. It's, it's, it's harmless. But check it out. Check it out. I, like, I do that to kids and we don't see it coming. And the look on their face is amazing. Because it's like, like, why the fuck you pluck me? But at the same time, ow! Fuck! So first, now, first of all, first of all, like, first of all, D, you would have been justified. You want to know why you've been justified? Because when Pee Wee drools on his hand and Robin looks back at Pee Wee and Pee Wee stops <laughs> mid-snore to look at him like, yeah, nigga, I did that. And goes right back to sleep. Pee Wee an asshole. No, oh, Pee Wee's oh, nah. Nah, you're gonna asshole. hold you're gonna hold all of this 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 drool residue you put on my hand, okay? I mean, I threw it on his face and throw his ass in the back. Then now uh, Leon in the back getting his ass whipped right now. Because <laughs> um as as we all know, when girls are hitting on you, that means they like you, so you know, clearly, you know. You know what, girls, I look Here's the thing, here's the thing. And I know that, you know, I know the, that same type of aggression bred a lot of future lesbians. Um, but... Um, <laughs> See, you ain't shit, but you're right. No, I'm keeping it 1,000. 1,000. You had, there are two types of girls. The girls that beat you up because they didn't know what they will become when they're 24. And then you had the girls who beat, beat on you because 
They mama crazy. So they crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way I can tell you. <laughs> now, now the thing I got to point out is while all this is happening so you in the car. you going to snitch on your mama? you going to snitch on your mama? <laughs> That's funny. Like, like, while all that was happening in the car, you just feeling bad because he's looking back at, uh, I mean, because I mean, uh, Rob is looking back at Leon like, Leon, what's wrong, man? Nothing. And he's like, you know what? <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> And that whole time, that poor, that that whole time, this poor kid is just getting smacked upside the head by both of these kids. I, I'm telling you, look, man. See, I went through my times in elementary school where, when that happened to me, I was ready to bust somebody upside the head with a with, with, like with a textbook. Just wasn't playing that. Well, shit. You 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 already had the innate violence. Congratulations. No, see, no, 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 no. no, no I'm just joking. I'm just joking with you, man. No, see, CJ, that came from that came from me dealing with it. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, which, in which I'm now nah, I got jumped. <laughs> numbers, <laughs> got jumped. Numbers, numbers game. I couldn't do that. Because remember, I was the quiet kid, so I felt, I felt like, you know, I felt for Leon. I'm like, yeah, when you're the quiet kid, you don't know, what, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen, how long. You figured, you know, you you think it to yourself, and of course, you're a kid, you don't realize that if they just keep doing it, eventually they'll leave you alone. No, they're gonna keep doing it until it gets turned, until the tables is turned on them. Yeah, like so. That. Like, like, so, you know, but here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the like, thing, so, here's, the, here's the real big thing. So you're promoting bullying the bullies back in, in the same way, then how does anyone learn anything, Eris? Oh, it's easy. They'll learn, the, I mean, they'll learn from that point on not to mess with you. With violence. You see, here's the thing. I never understand people who say, Oh, I don't want to beat my kids, but at the same time, you whoop their ass. Like, it's the same. What? Like, what are we doing here, you know, guys? Well, considering, considering, I know we're jumping ahead here, but considering that Robin pretty much gave Leon that same advice by grabbing a brick and knocking the literal hell out of them. I mean, we also have to talk about the fact that, like, when they're on their way to Funland, because it's supposed to be an anagram for Disney World, they're taking so long, they and they're in traffic, they fall asleep. And they run amok of the uh, white cop, who is like <clears throat> diet racist, but it's actually in a very funny way that the movie really shows it because he tells the guy to get out the car, and Robin already knows the deal. Like, all right, got my hands up, I'm already up, and I'm out. Hands up, don't shoot. <laughs> I like how he put his hands up on it. Like he started patting, like, hey, you know, he walks over to nigga, like, hello. Mm, she's like keep, she told that nigga keep, keep walking, walking. Like, <laughs> keep it moving yo he puffed his chest out like mm-hmm. uh, black chocolate no hold on no 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 I gotta take my line I gotta do my line from uh, for hurricane heist he just walks up to her <sighs> brown sugar <laughs> I like my share of black. You know what Diane Carroll was? Keep it moving, okay? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, he says, you know Diane Carroll was keep it moving. Couldn't hurt to try. <laughs> try, try my best. <laughs> Tried everything you asked. <laughs> so they get into the fun, they get into the fun world, and I just liked how she said. He said he's like, oh, it was like thirty five dollars. He's like. Wait a minute, is that a group rate? <laughs> this is like $35. That's for the whole group, right? <laughs> Dog, the way he counted the money was hilarious. This fool takes out money out of his sock, you know, putting all the money down. And I like how the old white lady looks at him. And he's like, don't act like you don't want to take it. I know, right? My man counted up to 200 literal dollars. Bro, she grabbed it, licked her finger. All right, sir, here's everything. <laughs> Here's your pack pass, your parking pass, your dude, dude, blah, 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 blah. And he's all grabbing it like, okay. All right. Please observe the, please observe the rules, Harry. No fun. Like, no jumping, <clears throat> no running, no no bouncing of any kind. No, I was like, of course. This no is stealing, like, no that gr- means you. Like, no grumbling, no stealing, that means you. you. Like, Jesus. It I'm is like me. racial it's profiling, it. I see. Let me tell you something, Mr. Hudlin, Mr. Reggie Hudlin, um, um, you know, I'm a film critic, so you have to listen to me now. Um, there is something I have to tell you. You do realize that this movie also introduced me to knowing that white people will always suspect that I'm doing wrong no matter what. <laughs> that was very early in my life that I had to 
feel that. See, I have gotten, you know, come on, we all went through racist stuff in our life, but that has yet to happen to me at, eight, at nine years old, two years later. <laughs> how about the two fact that, she, how about after she said no stealing, that means you, she goes, no breaking things and putting it back as if nothing happened. No <laughs> sad faces, bad attitudes. <laughs> Because that's what happens at Disney World. You, uh, they don't like that. It's a, bro, it is a, it is the laundry list of laundry list of rules, and the very last rule was no littering. Is that clear? Enjoy your stay. Oh man, and I like how the kids when they get in there and stuff, they're looking at the license plates and they're like, "How come we don't have people on our names?" Because you have a hood ass fucking name <laughs> in a white ass damn park. Why? People, white people, and this is why I, this is why D grew up militant early in life. <laughs> Beside my parents helping me, I saw that shit very early. Now my name is Dwayne. You think I find it? No, no. My name, the way they spell my, the way I spell Dwayne is too exotic for white people. So I, that would always piss me off. And then we have people who I thought had normal names like Lashawn. Yeah, I knew so many Lashawns. That was a normal name to me. But no, no, Mark, uh, Marcus with K's, they got it all the time. <laughs> it was like, yo, I hated it. I hated it so much, man. And then I was like, I don't know why Khalil's looking. <laughs> like, well, you really think you're going to get lucky and find one? <laughs> nah, I mean, but it's also funny, too, because they go inside the park and they go through that. And they're all like, they have that whole... Them getting in shenanigans and they're inside, like, I guess PB's fucking up the little place, breaking all the stuff, and Robin's putting it all back, and he missed the one plate and it broke, and I like how he just looked around and darted out the fucking door. <laughs> you know, what was that? Uh, I ain't your daddy and I ain't having it. Yeah, yep, that was the song. <laughs> he ain't having it. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. He ain't having it. Yeah, and I, I was thinking to myself, like, like, I like how Phase I Love is actually singing this song. <laughs> yeah, he actually was. I'm going to spank your behind and make your behind cry. Yeah. It wasn't that good of a line, but... <laughs> it wasn't, but it's a line that I remember. It's in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, I ain't your daddy and I ain't having it. Can I point out something? I understand this is 1992. Uh, hey, Robin. What is your job, bro? What do you do for a living? Because you had money. Cut hair? I don't know. Robin, shit. Nah, nah. Robin Harris looked like a nigga. Had, actually had a good job where it was low on the totem pole, but the benefits was perfect. I mean, <laughs> I mean, first of all, have you seen anybody spend as much money as he did in this movie? I mean, that was a, like, yo, nigga, who do you, who do you work for? It ain't like he had a credit card or nothing, man. He did all that. Oh, yeah. And he I had, mean, everything, everything was straight cash. This motherfucker, this motherfucker was all just throwing money out, trying to um, try to knock down the um, you know, throw the baseball at little um, little men, and it kept on bouncing off because you know, carny games are rigged. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mean you going you going a long way to get a dog, man. But you know, then again, you're going a long way for some mediocre vagina, but whatever. <laughs> no, first of all, D. First of all, D. It's not... Hold on, D. D. It's not mediocre. It is 1992 light-skinned box. Okay, 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 okay. I understand that. Still, the sex is going to be mediocre. It's going to be mediocre. Best. Oh, 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 look, I'm just going to be real. Hey, Robin, look at me. And it ain't going to be because of her. <laughs> now, 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 you know, now, you know what was funny? So, after he gets the kids back and stuff, and he's getting food for him, he comes across his uh, ex-wife. And friend. Doretha. Doretha. Dorita. 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 Dorethea. Black folk. Dorothea. <laughs> I, like, I think I think her name was just Dorothea. straight up Dorothea. Dorothea, I think that's what it is. Hey. I hate the fact that she just had this orange little dew on the top of her head. Real talk about everybody. You knew one auntie or somebody else's auntie. Well, that was your mama that had that hairstyle. It looked exactly like that. Shaved on all sides. I don't know what type of curly mess going on top of the head. And it was orange. 
you know, <laughs> orange. And then she shows up. She shows up with them easily broken press on nails and <laughs> and real uh, no. Before yoga pants became like the in thing today, them pants she was rocking. No, those like right, those are like yoga capris. Them yoga, thank you. Them yoga capris. Yo- she's yoga rocking capris. yoga capris. <laughs> them yoga capris. <laughs> All right, now real talk, real talk. She had a don't go. Oh yes, she did. <laughs> Mind blowing. Yeah, very very much. Bob, you know why Robin married her? <laughs> it's like, well, I, I mean, like I look at her, I'm like, okay, I got it. And, and then, bruh, them lips. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. You know why Robin got married to her, but then at the same time, it was like, you like, you know where I went. You're like, man, I got so happy. I'm finally with her, man. She bad as hell. Four months later, this bitch crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yes, exactly but, what but going to the subtlety of like the stuff that happens in the background, he's describing the kids tearing up the food and the guy that he's telling in the bar like about the story, there's somebody on the side that's like, oh, sorry, man, I didn't mean to gross you out like that. He's all wiping his back. I guess wiping the dude with his handkerchief and shit. I was like, okay, that was actually funny. <laughs> he was like, man. I'm, so, I'm sorry about that, man. <laughs> I love the fact that he said, well, what about the kids? He's like, the kids? You kidding me? Them kids must have missed a few meals. They ate so fast, I had to spit on my food just to keep them from eating mine. You know, you look, look, real talk, I seen it in real life. It is sad. It is sad. There are a bunch of kids because their mamas are trifling as hell. That's what that's what happened. You give them a McDonald's meal, it's like, wow. Oh, and then make it worse. only five seconds. Oh, and then make How it even worse. It? And then make it even worse, D, is the fact that when they got when they got girlfriends like Jamika, who's obviously an enabler. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like see, see, you got a good job. You won't like you got a good job and all. And she like, I guarantee you she said this to baby so many times. Girl, just come work with me. And like you ain't look, look if she show up at the job, why you here? <laughs> why you here? <laughs> Bitch, I will lose my job with you. It's like she like you know she a I don't even call her a neighbor. No, but she, she is. Just, She's an oblivious enabler though. I, I think so. I think you're right there. I think you're right about that. Now, because but then again, because her Leon is her king. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not dropping that. She looked like she called that nigga king every day. I mean it. Anyway, but yeah, they get on all the rides and stuff. Um, the kids, a lot of, <laughs> lot of, lot of, lot of shenanigans as far as like, like a lot of the stuff the kids do is just rebellious bullcrap. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to be honest with you, does it does it push the plot forward? D burly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to the point to where, like, they get on these rides, it, like, one roller coaster they get on, it looks like it kills you, but then when they get on it, it looks like it actually has a start and a finish, which is weird. I don't know whether that was just a sight gag. Yeah. The way it got me was the way it dropped you and you had to pull the parachute. And I'm thinking, like, why do you have to pull the parachute? That seems like a flaw. That's a lawsuit ready to happen. Yeah, you're yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, you can pull the cord now. The cord, pay what you mean this cord right here. Uh, <laughs> and in typical classic Simpsons fashion, it drops like a rock, and then the parachute. then the parachute Some pops wildy out. Coyote shit. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Now here's the I'm thing. Like, hmm? now, now here's the thing. So they go through all the rides and stuff. Pee Wee throws. I mean, um. Leon throws up on one of them and he hoses them down and stuff. And that's when the movie gets to starts ramping up big time with the kids separating, doing their own thing, and Robin and Homegirl dipping off and stuff. And Leon, as I said before, is a mama's boy. He's like, Mama, I don't go with them. They're baby's kids. Why couldn't it just be me and you alone? You know, which. Which. Like, which. Um, which hey, Jamaica. Yeah. But no, you had to get them kids out there. But then again, because I've been in that same situation, it ain't the kids' fault. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. It's just like... I'm look, just... it ain't the kids' fault that Janika... Look, I bet I knew what happened. I bet I knew what happened. When she woke up that morning, she got a call from LaShawn. She's like, oh, LaShawn, why you calling me? Mama ain't here. What do you mean your mama ain't here? Mama ain't been home since last night. 
All right, I come pick y'all up. That's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. Enabler. I you that's exactly what happened. Ain't enabler. I'm talking about the kids not being there for being alone for a day without their mom. I know, but still, the fact that's that not she enabler, knew, nigga. How's no. that? Because she real first of all, first of all, she's oblivious to the fact that her friend obviously has a problem. You're a friend of someone who's got three kids at home. She ain't got no. I mean, she ain't got no baby daddy around. So what are you doing out? Like, what are you doing not being there? Be a mother. You're obviously yeah, a mother okay. to your son. You know. I mean, you know to give him a a babysitter. But no, you, no, no. I think you're using the wrong word. That's what I'm trying to say. I think you're using the wrong word. That's not an enabler. The kid that like, she's more there for the kids. They ain't there for baby. That's not an enabler. That's somebody that gives a shit about the children. Yeah, but at the same time, you are this person's friend. You are letting this person continue to be an absentee parent to their child. Oh, yeah, get- oh, oh, you're ta- you're talking about her not snitching on. On baby, or her not putting baby's um um business out in the street like that. Not even putting her, yo. I'm not even talking about doing all that. It's more like, hey, yo, baby, can I talk to you over here for a few, like for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, she gonna stab her? <laughs> no, 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 no. Like an honest to God, I'm not even joking. No, no, no. Like an, Sneaky, like an, no, no, no. Like That's an honest to God, like an honest to God talk. Like, yo, baby, we need to talk. Oh, you know, she already did. Let me tell you something. If you're at the point where you're taking care of somebody's kids like that, oh, best believe you have already gotten to that point where you have talked to that dumb bitch. <laughs> you have done everything. The only reason why you did that was because if one of them kids jump out a window, <laughs> I would think to myself, oh, God damn, why did I do something? <laughs> That's all that really, all that really is. But, anyway, anyway, but, but yeah, they, they, you know, the kids are kind of doing their shenanigans, but we get a moment that is actually hilarious because Rob and the homegirl, they're going on, Jamaica, they go on this little love boat. And meanwhile, Doretha and her friend Vivian, they're following them on the boat. And I like that Vivian because she's fat, you see. She has all that food inside the boat. <laughs> Slowing it down. Because, you know, because, you know. She's 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 a woman of plus size. <laughs> she's a uh, BBW, you see. Hold on, second of all, you notice that when after Robin talks to his ex wife, she's like it's like, Oh, isn't that look, I ain't here for my alimony or the, like a getting your nerves by anything like that. I'm just here to have fun. Just like you. Oh, hey Robin, this like here's my I mean, this is my friend Vivian. Oh Lord, not another one. <laughs> Yo, she slurped up that cotton candy. You know you still love you, right? <laughs> and you know that you got one of those. You know you got one of those horrible best friends. Instigates that be like, every fucking that thing. Instigates everything. And she's like, you know what that was all about, right? Food ain't the only thing cold around here. You know he still love you. Uh, no, 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 no. You 90s. Talk, I still. Harris, you know. If you talk about enabler, no. Them heifers are, oh my God. No, they're just straight up toxic. They ain't nothing wrong with you. Like, like Janika is a girl that cares too much. Vivian ain't shit. She really ain't. (laughs) No, she ain't. She's just as bad. I mean, she is. I mean, she's worse, in fact, because she would say all of this crap and have or just just to soup up her own friend. I mean, I get it. You're trying to support your friend, but she's saying all that just to soup her head up and thinking that she still got a she still got a shot at Robin. Like, bruh, y'all been divorced. You were happy when you had this nigga in divorce court. This nigga go. said, "I put my ring, I put my wedding ring finger first off, mm-hmm. Robin. Good on you for still wearing it." But he said, "I put it on the wrong finger. To let me know I read the wrong, wrong woman." woman. I'm like. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Why are you still wearing that ring? My (laughs) man said, hey, look like the back of a toaster. (laughs) Now, did did y'all now now? Hey, Chris. Chris. (laughs) You you mentioned now the the, the little, you know, tunnel of love scene and all that. There is something to be said about this scene. Number one, it has the best song in the movie in it. But number two, um, 
bit skip section of the entire. It's very cool, very stylish. I like it. I think they put all the it's money towards the, this because like it's said, animated very well. Exactly. It's, a good it's chunk the, of that movie's that's, budget that's, went to a good chunk of that movie's budget went to that scene alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks it looks good. It looks very good. I love. Like I said, I really actually kind of like it. Yeah, you know, it's very. And then the second scene is over. I like it because you see them both holding hands and all that shit. <laughs> you got Dorita on top of the couch of a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you know, because again, she's fat. You see, you gotta understand that. Now, 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 here's a funny thing, guys. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Um, as cornballish as Robin has been the whole time, Janika's gonna let him hit. And all I have to say is this: that's all it took. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, dude, all it took. Now look, all it took was for him to say, "Hey, look, for like, hey, look, real talk, Janika. I'm real tired of having this conversation about baby." We in this tunnel of love, and I'm feeling some type of way. So why don't you go ahead and scoop them big hips over? Oh man! Now, meanwhile, the kids. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Not, all right, Eric. All right, Chris. I'm sorry. One second, but Chris, Eric, Chris, if you really want to be a part of of the band conversation, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Did what? Did was it just kissing? Or did he get a dumb in? <laughs> he got a thumb in. Yeah! <laughs> wow, Chris. You are a part of BAM now. Because you obviously knew that didn't fucking happen. But you thought it did. So <laughs> Somehow that is correct. Somehow that is correct. Me and it, that's right. Look, this we hear the all big voice. That's right, Christopher. D and Aries are having to lose a grandeur about women all the time. <laughs> Now, now you do. Now here's the funny thing, right? The kids are roaming around, and I, okay, again, the movie has its moments. I laugh at the part where the men in black are literally telling the kids, "Hey, where's your parents?" And I like how Khalil's answer is fucking hilarious. Yeah, at your at your at your folks' house playing pinochle. pinochle. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, okay, as a kid, that made me laugh. As a grown man, I admit, what? what? <laughs> Get out of my face. I would have punched the shit out of Khalil, yeah? <laughs> well, then, that, then Khalil's doing his job as a character. He makes you want to punch him. He is very punchable. He is a very punchable nine-year-old because he's one of those kids that punk on other kids, but he doesn't realize how much of a bitch he really is. <laughs> like, Khalil is actually soft to me. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna push the shit out of his ass. Right? He think he bad because he saw a couple of NWA um videos. And he I was just he was, about, I was just about to say that. I was like, bro, you think you hard? Like you think you hard just because you listened to Death Certificate? Get out of my face! Hey man, no oh, Vaseline, man. though. Come on now. <laughs> like, you think you like you think you badass because you think you badass because your because your friend stole. Um, the chronic from his bro- from his brother. <laughs> also, also shout out to Louis- also also because I'm good at knowing voices. Shout out to Louis Anderson as one of men black guys. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> that really was yep. Yeah, that was his voice. That being said, also this D does any of this progress the plot? Nope. Nope. Because it's just <laughs> hey, white now, people don't like these these minorities, so we're gonna put them inside this little ride because reasons. Now don't get me oh. wrong. Now don't get me wrong. This isn't on. This isn't on the level of big lipped alligator moments. Oh but, no, it's not. But the plot does take. It, it take. It begins to take a crawl from here because you notice that Robin stopped narrating throughout a good chunk of this movie because he wasn't yeah. there. <laughs> so it was like, hey, filler, 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 filler. Actually, actually, Harris, actually Harris, it does stop because it stopped because. <laughs> It stopped for a second to go to the kids' part, and when it stopped for a second, the narrator Robin Harris went flying out of the out of the windshield onto the road ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that plot went. The plot stopped that hard. And now, like I said, yeah, it is flushing. Here's the thing: 
the kids are badass. You don't have to flesh them out any more than they do. The only thing you have to do is do a, some type of sub, subplot. And the subplot is that eventually these kids are going to get in trouble and they're going to face something that is that is going to be hard for them to get out of. And that is the animatronics grip. When did this turn into Fortnite? Ding, 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 ding. When did a nine-year-old kid have the power to punch a fucking robot into pieces? That is the most Wait. that is the most brutal robot I've ever seen in my life. Actually, actually, you know, I'm skipping a part. Before we get to fi- to, the, to the Five Nights at Freddy's part of the of, of the kids plot, can we talk about their little rap which is eh, it's okay. It's 91. What I mean, do you want? It, 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 was, it was basically, <laughs> "Hey, let's listen to Marcus Houston rap." Okay. That's fine. That's what I said. That's what I said that Chris like that's 1992. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, got to get the ur- got to got to get the urban audience in somehow. So you know. No, yeah. I love I love how I love how Pee Wee the like, <laughs> the nigga basically said he looks up when his blouses at age zero. He is a gangster. <laughs> clearly, clearly, he 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 has his aspirations pretty high. You know, <laughs> pretty high. Now, now, now they're literally getting they're getting chased by the men in black, and I like how Leon did the accidental. I helped out everybody, and now he kind of sort of gets respect from Bebe's kids, but not really. I like how they start uh, recruiting white children. Bro, dog, the white kids did what most white kids do. Yeah, we're Bebe's kids. Can we be Bebe's kids too? And I'm like, oh my yeah. god, oh my. And I like god. it. And I like how, like you said, like how white kids do that. I like how black kids do the same thing too. What's your name, Winthrop? Nah, man, we gonna call you Opie. That's <laughs> white people. That is, if you were called Opie as a child, two things. Number one, we called you that because you was a cornball ass dude. <laughs> or number two, we called you that because, in real talk, we loved you. We only really use that to make fun of you or that we really, really enjoy your presence. I have seen it in both instances, man. There was a white boy that we used to call Opie in high school. He was the coolest white dude ever. I heard because he was two classes underneath me. But I heard when he got on stage to graduate, the whole school was like, Opie, Opie, Opie. <laughs> no, but I laughed because I like how LaShawn was just like, man, y'all got some corny names. And I'm like, I, I, I could just hear oh, that yeah. voice in my head because I've heard a black, I've literally heard a chick in my high school say the same exact shit. And I'm laughing because I'm like, like, oh my god and the, i can see and i can see it too, and i can see it too um as soon as he as soon as the other kids like my name's richie like the comic book richie damn i got some corny names and of course and of course opie had to go and kickstart the music video when he said well what's your name yeah. i'm the jawbreaker the, the kid to take and never skip school. I'm a flu faker. Original man in a strange land. You never saw butt on American handstand. Hey, 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 still got better bars than these fucking rappers nowadays. So there you go. <sighs> no, don't do that. I know. Don't y'all do that. <laughs> wait, 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 D. Oh, oh wait, 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 CJ. Hold on. Wait, 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 D. Before you start, CJ. So you telling me? That that half a bar that I just spit was better than the 2016 freshman of Double XL. Actually, no, because 21 Savage can kill that yes, shit. Yes, 21 anyway. Savage can kill it. Yeah, there, there, there's a thing here. So no, 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 I was going to say that, Eris, slow that thing, that, that same rhyme. Give it a Xanax and tell it to rap. To give it a Xanax and tell it to rap. That same part slow down on the trap beat. It's the same fucking. It thing. really, it really yeah, is. And just, and mumble like and just mumble it slightly. I mean, not, not do like, it, not do it. like mumble no mumble every these, fourth word. These kids Look. are are violent as shit because they're like beating the shit out of the fucking damn animals. They fucking cutting the damn frogs legs off and shit. Like what the fuck is going on here? Bro, how, did, bro, how is it Look. that Khalil took his pocket knife from I mean, from that uh like like from that dude who was dressed up as the frog? Cut the pants up and was like, "Oh yeah, we can use these to go swimming." <laughs> look, look, we're asking all this, and Khalil did drop a, a fucking toy soldier like nothing. So, but still, I stand by that, Khalil, bitch, man. You all you gotta do is like shake him real bad, and he'll start crying. 
<laughs> now, here's the thing. Um, now, now, I got a question for, for Khalil. Hey, Khalil, was any of that necessary for you to punch a toy soldier? I mean, just to yeah. punch a, a oh, robot we got, we, soldier. We got to show how badass he is, guys. Come on. Hey, Chris, he is from the hood. He plays, he doesn't play that shit. Apparently not. <laughs> He's not to be fucked with. <laughs> oh my god, man. Pull so up. Like, so, so, so his pull up game is uh, is on 100. Okay. Nah. He goes zero to, so he goes zero to 100 real quick. Nah. PB punching robot. No, 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 no. Punching, ro- like punching robot soldiers in, in theme parks, huh? That's what's hot on the streets. <laughs> I knew you were going to say. <laughs> oh, so, man. Uh, so finally the kids get captured by the T-1 fucking thousand. Oh, 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 guys. I'm, pause no, for no, a second. No, Paul, no, pause. No, no, no. Okay. Well, 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 no. no I was like, wait a minute. Chris, what are you about to say? I was like, pause for a second. The movie dares to sit there and think that there's a plot thread with these kids because you show the two white kids getting the bumper cars and like, where's the babies? I guess we gotta hold them off till the babies kids get back. I'm like, no, wow. no, 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 movie, you don't do this. You're wow. not gonna do this. You're you dare. They were still, they were still in hot pursuit. <laughs> I was like, what? Going they, were, they had the fucking nerve. So what was happening to babies kids? Well, apparently. It's Five Nights at Freddy's and the T-200 grab Khalil. <laughs> what the fuck is going on in this movie? What I loved about th- what I loved about that part was, wow, way to not get sued. You had obvious Terminator, Abraham, straight up Abraham Lincoln and Richard Nixon. Also. I like the fact that right before the trial started, Khalil is sitting in a in a in a, in a in, sitting in a bowl of water with electrodes with electroid helmet, about to get shot. I love how the fucking robot was going to murder Khalil. He notice how he died, the child. Notice how he had the two exposed wires already in his hand, ready to fry him. I was like, yo, it is like, here, 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 Richard Nixon comes up, and the first time, here's the trivia, that was Richard Little, yes, that Richard Little would do all those different impressions, that was him doing Richard Nixon. <sighs> anyway, um, <laughs> but, um, uh, then, what can turn, every, the, 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 I like how, oh, he said, what say you, the jury? Guilty, guilty, guilty. And then Leon says, hold up. I got a 1991's rhyme ready. And he starts rapping. He pulls Nine, the most conscious rapper. Okay, I got a question. There's one part where, there's, there's one part at the end of the song where he grabs it and goes, wave your hands in the air. Yeah. And wave them like you yeah. just don't care. I'm like, yo, I, 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 when I saw that part, I was like, yo, check out, I was like, yo, check out 1992 Souls of Mischief over here. Hey, yo, check it, <laughs> just a good one, check out all, but no, when he did that, that little new way here, when he grabbed himself and all that, do you know how many black kids got in trouble for emulating him? Oh, God, if that wasn't the truth. You ain't going to grab yourself. You ain't going to grab you. The only time you were allowed to grab yourself is you was acting like Michael Jackson. And even <laughs> then, you had a... You know, Eris, and even then, you had a two-pump limit. <laughs> right. You couldn't do it more than once, because after that, you're jerking off. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, but... but that was a full book. That was a cool little scene because you got to see you got to see the T like I said you got to see the T two hundred dancing and I guess everything was fine because they were they were no, they see, left after that no 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 see Weird. that that no D that was the big lift alligator moment thank you <laughs> meanwhile meanwhile probably the best part of the movie that I remember as a kid in school all of us loved right. was the uh, yeah, and, and so so basically, Jamika goes inside the bathroom, and 
homegirl and her friend Vivian, they're in there talking about Rob and how he came over to her place, which didn't happen. And <clears throat> typical of what what happens, uh, she she buys into it and starts giving Rob the cold shoulder. And he was like, "Uh huh." So you heard that? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and sell this shit right now. Let's go. That's the fact. No, out of the fact that they was in a movie, they actually had enough time yeah, of the awesome. day. They to like to go to a movie. They sitting in there. She noticed that. I mean, he noticed that she's been acting real cold, and and then she goes, "Huh." So I guess she goes. So I guess you will only see her at night, huh? He's like, "At night? I ain't trying to see that woman for the rest of my life." That's not what I heard. <laughs> That's and a nigga uh, hates his wife. And then when he looks, hold up, hold up. What you mean heard? She talked to you or something? Uh huh. All right, we gonna settle this now, right now. I like how he just grabbed her and she's like, okay, I guess I'm coming along. I was like, oh yeah, you coming along? Cause we gonna settle this. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be playing this cold shoulder with me for the rest of this trip. Got me out here spending all this money taking, oh, like taking America's most wanted kid like around this this freaking park. Nah, nah, we ain't we ain't having that. So they go into the bathroom, and they decide to settle this. And what and what kicked off in that bathroom has been repeated throughout black schools for years. Mm-hmm. I mean, every joke, thinking that people ain't never seen this movie before, was repeated. And again, you think it's you original, you're going to use them jokes. <laughs> Does them dozens were fucking hilarious. <laughs> you you pull them dozens out, <laughs> Jesus! You pull them dozens out, thinking that you're clever, <laughs> so you, praying to God or nah, praying nah, like the way like, you use you, no, 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 the way you use you those. Pray, you pray to God, thinking that, thinking that you're gonna be clever enough to get the joke off, and everybody gonna laugh at it like that crap was so original. You know, good will somebody gonna be like, man, this nigga got that from Baby's Kids. And I hated that because the one that's the killer is the last one. This bitch so stupid. She said it was chilly outside. She went and got bowl. Got bowl. <laughs> that's the that's the killer. That's the killer. You use that. That's the third one. <laughs> My man, she's he's a legit mama's so old. She was there the first day of slavery. <laughs> no, you know what made that? No, you know what really made that? What what I really discovered was. When it came, when he said you know, the chili outside, um, the chili outside joke, what really made that funny was the fact that as soon as he said it, Neil Carter, that's when you that lost. Laugh. <laughs> she that cracked laugh. up with that one. <laughs> that laugh, that was that's what made that scene so funny. Just that laugh alone. Oh my god, man! But like I said, that whole scene is just fucking hilarious. But that's at this point, this is when the movie goes into. All right, guys, we're really running in circles here on how we're going to end this movie. Let's just go fucking nuts for no goddamn reason. And then the kids take over a pirate ship because reasons. Yeah, they took over a pirate ship. And like you said, I mean, like you said, CJ, they took over a pirate ship because this movie at this point was really trying to figure out how do we, how do we get them out of the park? I mean, there are plenty of ways to do it, but that's not it. See, it was... No, it was no, no, it wasn't it, Chris. You know what it was? It was actually. Is it is it seventy two minutes now? Fuck! All right, um, a Titanic. <laughs> gotcha. We did it. Oh man, but the whole I will say this: the whole scene is fucking hilarious because again, it's just hey guys, white people they don't. Oh man, they're really fair for these black kids. Yeah. And I just, everything is just, the chaos is happening and stuff. I like how the white kids are like, oh my god, baby kids, they're back. We're, we're finally going to do some stuff. It's like, oh, okay, cool, fine, you know. And then I like how Robin you is know, like. Who, who gets the, uh, you know who gets the MVP? Opie gets the MVP because they show that little part where he cuts off the rope to let everything down. He just does like, yeah. It was like he was waiting all his life to do that shit. <laughs> Like he was waiting to be rebellious. Yeah, I'm rebellious <clears throat> with the black kids. No, but I like how Robin knows what the deal is and was like, "All right, fuck them kids. Let's get the hell out of here." 
Now, can we say? Now, hold on. You know my. You know, speaking of it, my favorite part of like between Opie and Richie was when was when they were all running and the security guards or the sorry, the men in black was chasing after them, and Robin and Robin and Jamaica they were at the little golf, the little putt putt golf area, right? Yeah. And and he goes, man, look at. He said, look at that man. He said, he's a worse. He said, man, they worse than uh. He was. He's a worse than the other kids. Man, put that crap down, man. Thank. God, they white. <laughs> I mean, that was the first thing he said. Thank God, they white. I mean, I'm just sitting there like, are you kidding me? Are you okay? Good one, good one. <laughs> no, that's funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> there was a lot of scenes like that too. There's a whole lot of scenes like that, man. But the, but the whole end of the sequence is just fucking hilarious because of the insanity of it and them bouncing and stuff. The kids just taking over the boat, Robin, like, rowing, rowing her and Javika out of there and stuff. And then we get the Vivian and fucking Homegirl. They're tied up. Like, they're going to get thrown off the boat. I'm like, well, that was random, but okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True story. They both died. <laughs> <laughs> now, what makes it even more hilarious is that they literally run out and as they're driving, the fucking theme park is like crashing and burning with helico- police helicopters flying in and shit. I'm like, okay. oh, oh, no, no. And you forget the best part, though. Robin gets in the car. Guess who already had the car? The kids. The kid. Pee Wee takes out all them watches. It ain't time to go. What you trying to do? Leave us? I'm like, hey, it's like, oh, oh, oh. I love that. You're like, nigga, I know you ain't trying to roll out of us. I love that. Like you said, all all, all you see is all of the world falling apart piece by piece. <laughs> I mean, but the whole, but it is kind of funny and stuff like that. But also the fact that the cop also comes in there and tries to pull him over and he's like, oh shit, it's Baybay's kids. And then just turns around and beelines it back. I'm like, okay, that's, yeah. I'm right. like, how bad? What did they do in a previous day that was like, nah, man, them babies kids really don't fuck with them children. <laughs> kids are dead. Nope, those children. Know what I said, those children. <laughs> we scared them kids, man. So why you running away? Jackson, get back to your post. <laughs> Yo, here's my thing, here's my thing. So you mean to tell me if one day those kids figure out how to ruin Disney World <laughs> and all that do was get a bunch of white kids riled up. You know what, Chris? That is the most real thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> no, nah, but you know what's funny? Again, yeah, with the whole thing with the sight gag, Robin is looking at the whole place burning down in his rearview mirror, and he's like, ah, oh, shit. Just like, oh, didn't see that happening. <laughs> I like how he scoots down. He scoots down. Like, I'm like, who's looking at you? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> This motherfucker. So him and Janika get get into it. He's like, uh-uh, I'm taking these kids home right now. <laughs> I like how he drops them off and him and Jamika had that conversation like, yeah, she didn't want the kids. She shouldn't have them. He's like, what, you hot? You think you wanted them? You do realize it takes two to have a kid. But here's the thing. This is the thing that gets me about Robin's whole demeanor. It, it, it's what it gets me. It's, it, 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 it goes with the plot. It's supposed to do that. Um, his whole out is very... You know, what a lot of people are until you get in that situation. Like, you know, it ain't my responsibility. You need to... It's the, it's the stuff that people have to hammer in a lot. Take care of your responsibilities. All the shit you, that you hear that you're supposed to do. Until you get in that, sign, that kind of situation. You know how, many shit, how much shit I heard um, getting married early? Uh, how much shit I heard when I had my son? <laughs> the... the, the a wild shit. It was like, you better have that bitch put you on child support or you better pay child support to the one of, well, you need to get a daycare, you need to get this, you need to get that. Like, you don't know none of the shit that, that a person goes through. They're probably a good person going through a tough time of their life or, mm-hmm. in some cases, they trifling. And, and it kills me because it's because of the trifling people, the people that are trying their best to be parents in a bad situation, get shit on. And here's the thing, though. And in this case, in this case, is a double-edged sword because Bebe is 
by all accounts, what we can tell, a trifling ass mom. So it's hard to really, it, in this case, everything Robin is saying is just pure emotion. Like, I don't care about them kids. <laughs> I don't lie. I ain't their daddy, nigga. Shit like that. You know what I mean? This visceral, yeah. mean shit. <laughs> so. Listen now. Listen now. Look. Listen, look. If she, uh, listen now. If she didn't want the kids, then she shouldn't have had them. She didn't have them by herself, Robin. What you saying Robin for? I ain't they daddy. <laughs> that shit too. Niggas love saying that. We love saying that. Sure. That's well, the drop responsibility. Like at least you recognize that they I mean, that they do have one. I don't see nobody shaking their heads, pointing their fingers at him. What you talking I love about? That. Listen now, what you want to do? Listen now, what you want to play that old move for, huh? I thought the devil was through when they made Rosemary's baby, but oh no, oh no! Now we got baby's kids. Here's me. We said all that. Here's me. Hey, Robert, are you done with your stand up? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it, it's 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 one of those situations where it's like it's a funny scene and stuff because again, it's kind of like you said, D. It's just this is the kind of conversation that most guys kind of are internally thinking and stuff a little bit. It ain't even internally thinking. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I I know this. You've been doing it throughout the podcast. You've been trying to paint the better light, but a lot of guys don't think that way. Even the good guys think that way. We think the same way. Like I ain't, I ain't having those kids. I ain't their daddy. Like, like what their mama need to do and shit like that. You're like niggas always do that shit. That's why it sounds. That's why when you read those tweets from Ty for your boy, uh, who is it, uh, Turpentine or whatever his name is, yeah. that asshole. <laughs> so it's like reading his tweets out loud. It's like, oh my god, I sound like that. Yeah, you sound like a dick. <laughs> Fucking miss that. Let's also point out that how how about when Robin actually does get smacked back reality when he realizes after taking the kids home, he takes them to the apartment and he sees how, you know, like how run down it is. Uh, and, you know, they really had nothing to eat. He left some, you know, he just gets some money. <laughs> oh, man, you know, it's ten dollars. It's ten dollars. Call us pizza, man. And his pee he don't man, come man. around here no more. Well, I'm sure your mom be home soon. Just, you know, just leave the door locked and, you know, just, just be careful, y'all. Y'all take care, all right? Rob, I'm like, Robin, you're starting to like the kids. You're feeling bad for them. The you don't want to leave them. Look, you don't this, is leave coming, them. this is coming from D. This is coming from D with his nieces and nephews. Don't. <laughs> now, oh. now, the part, now, hold on. Now, I want to point out something. Notice that we see in animated form, the same two, the same two robbers from House Party. There was our House Party crossover. Fucking the same, the same two you, guys. How you doing? How you doing? How you, how you, how you doing? The joke now, is not funny no more. <laughs> now, like now, when he gets back to the car, noticing how depressed he was looking, she was like, now do you see how it is? Psh, man, the only thing I know is that them kids need a social worker. <laughs> <laughs> DC, you see, there you go again. See, that's fucked up. But I, at the same time, they got one. Social worker some shit. Um, <laughs> so, now, you more know, than likely, that's the truth, too. <laughs> you know, the thing that got me, the thing that got me was, was how she was still trying to be in the defense of Bebe. And she goes, I mean, and, and I'm sorry, then Robin's like, look, Jamaica, I was a kid, too. And he was like, I was a kid, too. You know, and I, you know, I did my fair share of cutting up too, right? That wasn't as bad as those kids. Nowhere near as bad as those kids. He said, "My, like, look, anytime I got in trouble, my mom would tell me to go get a switch and beat me till my daddy got home, and then he'll put on one of those old blues records, the ones that skip. Whoop, you wanna wanna slap, wanna wanna slap." <laughs> D, I'm like you. All right, Robin, that was a good, that was a good rendition of your of your comedy routine. You want to say something know, original? Right? Here's no, when you said it, here's me. <laughs> uh, that's nice, Robin. You quoting your child abuse. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you quoting your child abuse. Now, you ready to uh, you ready to deliver some lines that aren't from your stand up routine? I mean, it don't have to be the HBO one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do the HBO one. I'll take Def. No, sorry, not Def Comedy Jam. I'll take uh, what was it? Uh, I'll take uh, Saturday Night at the Cotton Club or something. <laughs> the Laugh Factory. I don't care. I mean, oh man, Dino Mike. Nah, um, so 
basically after he has his change of heart and stuff like that, and he realizes like, hey, he needs to get back with homegirl and stuff. He, you know, leaves the bar and stuff, and um, ends up meeting up with her, and they're waiting outside the bar. Bruh, how, that's what got me. That's what really got me. It's like, how, how does she know? How does she know to meet him at the... How does she know to pick him up at the bar? With no cell phones, by the way, back then. She just appears. <sighs> she just showed up assuming that that nigga was at that bar. How did she know he went to that bar? Hey, look, I know, look, I know I'm answering a lot of questions here, and I know that we shouldn't be caring, but look, she just shows the fuck up. And not only then, she kisses this nigga. And I'm thinking to myself, what did he do to earn it? He was acting like an asshole the entire time, oh, the entire ride home. Like, how did he, was it because you went back to baby? He's like, oh, yeah, she gave him $10. That is so nice. He deserves the pussy. Is that what it was? I don't I think that's what it was. I, 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 I would say that's what it was. And, in and, other words, in other words, nigga was just trying to fuck. <laughs> no, he still didn't get it because he still didn't get it because they decided to hang out for a little while longer. And what do they do? Somehow he got coked into. I mean, he got he gets coaxed into. So where are we going next, Mister Harris? How about Las Vegas? <laughs> Vegas in the house, baby. <laughs> My man Pee Wee picks up the one cord to all of Las Vegas in a simple pull and caused hey, uh, caused what you the doing? T- no! no, actually he caused uh, he caused a citywide blackout. Actually, you missed the part where I actually did legit laugh where they're in Las Vegas and all of a sudden a random black dude. Oh no, it's Batman's kids. Run! Oh no. Oh no no no! See, I was gonna go back to that part. I actually want to go back. I actually want to go to another part much earlier, um, when Khalil was like, "So where are we going next, Mr. Harris?" I said, "Where are we going next week, Mr. Harris?" Next week? Well, oh, I'm telling you, where I'm taking you next week. I'm gonna take you to a snake pit. Now go on. Your mama waiting for you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Harris, their mom's still not home. <laughs> yeah, but they, they have a with the four. But yeah, so you know, so at the end of that. We get that citywide blackout, and we get the repeat of the repeat of Robin's line because we loved it so much in the early in the movie that we get to hear it again. Test two, baby. Test two, oh. baby. Can I also mention, in case we didn't mention it, probably one of my favorite lines, which still makes me laugh to this day. Is oh you ain't is he's a, oh like oh you're not gonna quote him like, like see so not gonna say nothing huh you like you claim you ain't gonna snitch huh so boy if you don't tell me where your little brother is I'm gonna beat the black off of you you are gonna look lighter than Michael Jackson I think we did mention that did we no we did not we did not mention that that was actually one of my favorite jokes there was one joke uh, there was one it was there was something else I had to bring in uh, had to mention it was uh it was just the just the look of Pee Wee. When he when they first introduced themselves to those white kids, right? And I say that because Pee Wee had this look of a nigga that was already shitting. So when he finally said, "We don't die, we multiply like that." Especially after, especially especially after witnessing uh, Leon kiss uh, Lashawn, he talking about, "Hey, player, yeah, he got it going on, baby, like no other." (laughs) God. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself the whole time. Nobody has changed him. <laughs> he stinks. What are we doing here, <laughs> guys? I was like, shit. Nobody has changed him. I was like, oh my gosh, man. It's, it's a bunch of, um, the other part, that really, the other thing that gets me, though, is uh, there was one part we didn't mention also was, um, he was telling me, I need to show you Dolomite. He was like, way down in Joe Deep. And they said that little Little thing. Jamaica was like, "Why would I show my kid that a movie? killer pimp movie? A killer pimp movie like that? It's easy. That's your problem." I'm like, "Oh boy, this yeah. is why everybody loves Dolomite <laughs> because they do not see how shitty that movie is." But whatever. But no, they didn't get me though. Where they even said that he like Dolomite, man, man. They was all laughing about it, right? And then you hear Ronaldo right? Like, that was romantic. <laughs> Oh my god, man! But yeah, that was Baby's Kids, a movie that cost ten million dollars to make, and they only made about eight. <sighs> yeah.
Yeah. Because yeah. I knew a bunch of people. You know, like, you know, I don't know if they showed this. In. I think we support. I mean, they had, they yeah. had, I didn't know we supported this because a lot of black kids are out there. A lot of millennials know this movie. I mean, when I say no, we know this movie. We you know, have our parts in the movie and all that. You know what's funny? It, it, opening weekend, it had a lot of heavy hitters already, and the fact that it hit top ten is actually pretty amazing and stuff. Because when you have, did they come out at the same time during Terminator? No, actually. Um, so oh. op- open number one that weekend was Death Becomes Her. Uh, ah, hun- okay. Honey, I blew up the kid. I'm still shocked that they did a sequel. Um, uh, Mo Money, sorry. Mo Money. Uh, yeah, okay, I understand. Uh, a League of Their Own. Oh uh, God, that's a big. Also opening that same weekend, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, that was a cult, so it didn't really get that big. Uh, Sister Act. Uh, what week was it in? Uh, it was in its sixth week. Mm, okay. Um, Boomerang. What week? Uh, eighth week. Oh, alright. And, still, um, Universal Soldier. Still. Wow, really? And cracking at number 11 was, uh, Batman Returns. God, that was a busy time during the movies. That really was. Yeah. That really was a busy time during the movie. You understand? And, and Patriot Games too. So yeah, it's, yeah, definitely. You a lot. gotta stay like. You gotta stay like they didn't stay in that long. That's why I say it, it, it. You know, this it was just crowded at the time, and I think black audiences were not just going to because no money was out. So I don't know, man. I think it's just you know you know what also didn't help it, it being PG-13 in the early 90s. That didn't help it either. Let's just be real. Yeah, I That's mean, another... most people were still attached to the Disney movies, so it's kind of like, hey, it's this movie that's a PG-13 cartoon. Okay. And then you got, and then you got to think about, <laughs> this was America that was still saying, Bart Simpson is so rebellious. Edgy. So, yeah, <laughs> Bart Simpson was edgy. So <laughs> that Twitch tells you where, Amer- the, where America yeah. was at at that time, man. Yeah. And, you know, and, and look, if he was edgy, just imagine what three black kids, I'm sorry, four black kids could be. So I'm pretty sure they hurt them too, yeah. And let's just be real. When it comes to animated movies, the animation does no favors for this movie. It does not. It really all. doesn't. It's not a pretty, this is real talk. It has a charm to it, but it's not a pretty movie. Look at it. It really is. not I actually hate the fact that it's like that. Yeah. But, like I said, I enjoy the movie and stuff like that. It's kind of... You know, it's kind of funny to... It's kind of... I think you, you probably did mention this already about how, like, I kind of wish there was more behind-the-scenes, like, uh-huh. retrospective about this movie coming from, like, Reggie Hutman and them. Because that would be kind of... Because it's funny because we get it for Boomerang in a lot of these movies, and I think this is one of those cartoons that's like, hey, it'd be kind of interesting to kind of get some behind the scenes, like, hey, how did this come come to be, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, it would be interesting because it is, it does play a role, and just, you know, just when it comes to black characters on screen, too, that's another one. Especially, you know, us nerds love saying, oh, we ain't had no cartoons, but Baby's Kids was one. And it's weird that I this nerd culture, we don't, we don't talk about it that much. And it wasn't, and, and like in so many words, it's not a bad movie. In, in fact, at the very best, it's a B. You know what I mean? If you want to be really critical about it, at the very best, it could be a B. But I understand why people don't talk about it. It's just, there's not much to talk about outside of adult jokes, really. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing that's like, that's the only thing that stinks about it, man. And like I said, it didn't make his money on DVD the way you thought it was. Either. It just this is not Again, one of the pop titles that people got at their houses like that. That's if it had extras, I think it would have sold more. That's the thing. It's like yeah, this. This yeah. is kind of one of those movies that is like if you threw some extras in there, you would get people like, oh shit, I gotta find, I gotta buy these kids just to have it on the shelf to say I got. Got it. You know that kind of thing. Cause I'm a su- I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So that's another thing too. I know. It sucks, but I don't think we're going to have one for one main reason. The movie is approaching 30 years old, Chris. Yeah. The, it, and it feels like if they ain't have one at the 25th anniversary, what makes you think they're going to have anything at its 30th? True. It sucks. You, yeah, there's, there's probably some real cool background to this movie. There's, there has to be. There has to be a story here where it, it had to be up to... 
I don't think it was a passion project, but it might have been one. We don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm it was an idea because, I mean, Reggie Elton coming off House Party and stuff. He was like, fuck it. I can just do this movie about these kids. And it's an animated movie. All right, cool. Let's do this. You know, and... Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, maybe we hey, can save man. that to if we see Reggie Hutton in real life. Like, yo, there's some mysterious nuggets about this movie. I have a feeling that you're going to waste all three questions on X-Men somehow. I don't know how. <laughs> I just got this feeling. <laughs> you're just going to waste them all. Okay, okay, okay. So about, so that time to chill. Like, Chris, stop it. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> like, see, I'm not going to because, again, I already, I don't need to ask about the fucking... The, the Chahop, T'Challa fucking storm hive and shit. I don't know. I, look, 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 I got a feeling that you're gonna, you're gonna waste the first one. Like, damn. And then you're gonna actually, actually intelligent your question and be in the same realm. Like, Chris, you just asked that question. I know, I know. Shut up. I'm like, all right, all right. He's like, what's your final question? All right, Chris, this time think. Make it be a good question. Okay, I got one. I got one. So who's that guy with the lamp? Look, 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 okay, I got it. So who's that guy with the lampshade? I'm like, hey, you find out who the answer is. Oh, that's it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hudlin. You just wasted. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Here's you, here's you, Chris. Here's your response. We know who it is now, though. <laughs> Third eye open, dog. Third eye open. <laughs> see, I'm, see, I'm just not checkers, D. Just not checkers. <laughs> <laughs> look. Man, I'm gonna kick the shit out of anybody that fucking throws that shit in my face. Chestnut check. Get the fuck out of here. Go home, dog. Don't take 